Good afternoon to you and welcome to John Locks Park here in Callan in County Kilkenny. It is the All-Ireland Senior Camogie Championship. It's Group 3, Round 3 and it is of course a big clash. It's a repeat of the All-Ireland Final and a repeat of this year's League Final. It pits Kilkenny against Galway, both teams unbeaten and it promises to be a tight and tough affair we reckon for the next couple of hours. My name is Killian Whelan and we will be bringing you the best of the action here today from Callan. As always I've been joined by Elaine Aylward, good afternoon to you, Elaine. Afternoon, Killian. You didn't have to, to yeah, <laughs> you didn't have to travel too far in preparation for this encounter. What do you expect? Yeah, it's hard to know, I suppose. As you said, a top of the table clash, both of them unbeaten, and you know a little bit of history between the two teams. So no doubt, both through to knockout stages, there'll be a little bit of sounding out. But you know, I think both teams will be anxious to maintain that unbeaten record going into knockout camogie. Uh, looking at it, we know Galway, as the visitors come in here today, things have been on the injury front anyway. They've been badly affected, and I'm just thinking of the league final when, you know, I suppose they, they went toe-to-toe -to -toe enough with Kilkenny until the last couple of minutes, but Carrie Dolan scored 10 points in that league final, of course, she's one that is missing here today. Yeah, she's a huge loss, look, and she adds to the injury worries, I suppose, that Carl Murray and his backroom team do have, but look, they have a strong bench, and I suppose the benefit of this being, you know, no last game, I suppose, lose, and they're still in the championship, so they can afford to run that bench maybe and give those girls that are coming back from injury a few more weeks maybe to get back and get them right for maybe a championship quarter final or semi-final. Yeah, and that, you know, that probably affords the opportunity to probably look and size up their options within this group to be able to afford them that chance. Yeah, look, if this was knockout Camogie today, you'd imagine that any girl that's even maybe 70 or 80% you're going to be looking at her to try and maybe get 5, 10, 15, whatever couple of minutes are in her, in her, because you'll need to get it. Whereas as it is, look, great if they win, they're straight through to a semi-final potentially. And look, if they lose, they're still into a quarter final, and it gives three weeks either way for the girls to come back from injury and have a full panel to pick from then come knockout Camogie. Looking at Kilkenny then and what Brian Dowling has to fare, you know, Kilkenny haven't again been spectacular, but they, they you know, they're still there winning games and uh, getting into these kind of uh, deciding stages ultimately. Yeah, if they hadn't won the league in the manner they'd won it after their performances throughout it, it'd probably be a little bit worrying for Brian, but the championship really has progressed much the same as the league did. You know, they haven't been outstanding, but they've still been getting results. And, you know, ultimately when they pull away from teams like against Westmeath last week, they are able to rack up big scores. So, you know, he'd be pleased with that. I suppose worrying that they haven't managed to put in a full 60 minutes performance and that's probably something they'll target here today is to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Galway for that full 60 minutes and try and get the best out of themselves. But the opposite of Galway where you know he might have lost a few players in the league you know, they've flipped the whole thing around. Katie Power is back and looks like a Katie of old. And, you know, you see Claire feeling back uh, on the edge of the square. Yeah, Kilkenny are probably going the other trajectory. They're getting those players back in. Colette Dormer has togged out here today, coming back from a thumb injury. So, you know, Kilkenny look to have a full panel to pick from and they'll be anxious to push on now. And, you know, a couple of girls getting a chance maybe to put up their, their hands for a place when it comes to quarterfinals or semifinals. So, let's put your head on the block then now. This encounter could be a bit of a chess match. It could go either way. You, you know, a lot of people feel maybe that that Galway need to maybe get a victory here because psychologically it could be good for them for the latter stages if they were to come up against Kilkenny again. Yeah, look, I don't think whoever wins today. Look, let's not rule out a draw either. But I don't think whoever loses today will be too despondent. You know, they'll know that they're still in the championship. They look to take the learnings from today. From a Galway point of view, I think if I was in Galway shoes, I'd like to get a win against Kilkenny. You know, psychologically as much as anything for the last couple of games now it has been. Kilkenny beating them and, and just getting that little uh, now on them so I just feel from a Galway point of view you'd like to get one up on them today and have that over them then if you were to meet them again further down the line. The views then of Elaine Aylward and uh, she will be bringing us uh, her expert analysis throughout this encounter here this afternoon and uh, we'll have uh, plenty of the action here between Kilkenny and Galway it's all on the way after this. Fish as he is Kilkenny manager Brian Dowling. Uh, Brian Tough encounter, considering the way everything has gone. Uh, of course, you're up against uh, Galway, a side that you've got to know quite well in the last while. Yeah, it looks was last uh, last year or two. We know each other fierce well. We played in the last, I think, three national finals and been in the uh, league championship two years ago again. So look, it's going to be a big test today for us. Um, you know, disappointing performance last week against Westmead. You know, we probably played well in the second half, but poor first half. So look, we kind of work on a few things during the week. So hopefully, we see an improvement in us today. And we know when you're playing Galway, you have to be at the top of your game if you want to win. Looking at it, Brian, would there be a, just a little bit of a target for you, maybe, as uh, myself and Elaine have alluded to already in our bit of analysis, that uh, you turn in maybe a 60-minute performance here? 
Look, obviously, every day you want to go out, you'd love to play for 60 minutes, but look, that's not possible either. Look, any of the matches, the hurling match today, Tip and Waterford, you know, it's, 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 you know, one team gets on top, the other team gets on top. And look, we know we won't be on top for 60 minutes, we'd probably like to be on top for a bit longer in games, um, you know. But look, when we hit our purple patch, I suppose we're getting the scores, and the key is we're staying in games, and you know, and we're getting the wins. But look, we obviously we would like to be a bit more ahead or, you know, not as far behind in some games. I know some days we might be able to pull that back. So look, we'll just stay going, I suppose. The game is 60 minutes. We won the second half last week, two ten to three points. So, you know, we just have to put a bit better performance than we did in the first half. But, Brian, does it matter really if you keep winning? Yeah, that's true. Look, I suppose, look, if you win or lose this time of the year, you're looking for improvements. And, look, we would like to be playing a bit better at times. But, look, again, our aim is to year is get out of get out the group. And, you know, we're, I suppose, ourselves in Galway now, whoever wins today, we'll, we'll finish top. So, look, we want to win today. We want to finish top. I know it doesn't guarantee you go straight into a semi final. But, look, I suppose you can only control what you can. And, look, hopefully, we get the win today and be true then to maybe a semi final. Final question to you. You know, the team seems to now in the last while have a little bit of a settle to it. Are you happy enough with that? Yeah, look, I suppose we tried a lot of players in the league and, you know, and in the last two games as well. And look, I suppose I said to the girls the last couple of weeks with COVID now back again, um, you could name a team on a Tuesday or Thursday night and by the time the match comes around on Saturday, you have to make change. Like, you know, in Slayer two weeks ago, we had a team named them an hour, two hours before throwing, we had to change three players. You know, so look, it's difficult, that situation. Then you have a couple of injuries thrown in. So you have to have a strong panel and the girls know that the 15 to start is the girls that come on that are making a huge difference for us and finishing the game stronger. And we know that to be the case today as well. We should have a look, Brian. Okay, thanks, lads. Colour manager Carl Murray. Uh, Carl, down in Kilkenny, it's always a tough one. Yeah, it is always a tough one, right, in fairness. But um, look, we're looking forward to it. You know, both teams qualified. Um, you know, not an awful lot at stake, to be honest with you. But um, I'm sure both teams are looking forward to it now, and we'll see how it goes. You mean not an awful lot at stake, but probably for you, just again, you know, getting another game in the system. Um, you know, obviously injuries have been part of it, but getting girls settled in positions and all that kind of thing is obviously important as you head to the more meaningful stages, I would imagine. Oh, exactly. Yeah, look at I know there's nothing at stake, really, but you still want a good performance down here, and um, you know, you want to have something to build on in the, for the next few weeks, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, look at we're happy with how things are going, and um, as I say, looking forward to it now. Looking at things, you, you, you've made a few position switches from the program. What we've seen, anyway, you know, is it is it still maybe just trying to uh, you know fill you know positions or, or, or get an idea of maybe some players in certain positions? Exactly, it's just getting an idea and look at you know you're going to be tested here against Kilkenny, like you know, we know that. Like so, it's just um, trying out a few different things and um, and hoping to work. You know, look at in three weeks' time, we need to know everything about our players because you, you need to put your best team on the field for for knockout Kamogi, whether it be a quarter final or semi final. So just you know putting the finishing touches there today. And ultimately, Kyle, long old trip back to Galway. Would you be likely going back out here with a win, or is it would it mean much psychologically? Do you feel? Um, whatever. Look, whatever, whatever result is, got, is, is, it is. Whether we're in a quarter final or a semi final, there are the games that matter in a few weeks' time. But obviously, look, we're not going to pretend. To, we'd love to come down here and win a game. But if, if we don't, it's not coming into the world. We're still in the championship, and you know, as I said, we'd probably be in a quarter final, and we'll see how that goes. Thanks very much. Okay. And welcome back. It's here to uh, John Locke Park and on camera you can see Kilkenny as they get ready here at the uh, clubhouse end of the ground and uh, let's get straight into the teams because uh, there are late changes on both sides and we start with the uh, home team. So Kilkenny will line out with in goal Emma Kavanagh of the Rower in Stieg. Coming in replacing Michelle Teen of James Stevens is number 21. That is Colette Dormer from Barrow Rangers. Claire Phelan, Liz Downey is at full back and Davina Tobin, an all star, of course, from last year of Emeralds, will be in the other corner in the half back line. Then there's also another change. Kellyanne Doyle will wear five of Piltown. Megan Farrell captains aside at six from Thomastown. And coming in wearing number 18 is Michaela Keneally from Wine Gap and she replaces Miriam Bambrick of Barrow Rangers. At centre field, it's Neve Dealey of James Stevens and uh, all star, of course, from last year, Grace Walsh of Tullerone. It's another all star, then Denise Gall of Wine Gap. She wears 10. Mary O'Connell of Clara will be on the 40 and Steffi Fitzgerald will be outside her from Young 
Ireland's wearing 12. And in the full forward line then, it's Katie Nolan of St. Martins, Miriam Walsh, an all-star, of course, from last year of Tullerone, and Aoife Doyle of Piltown will wear the number 15 jersey. Turning to Galway then, who are the visitors here to uh, John Locke Park, as you can see coming up on our screen there, and uh, change in goal. Uh, Laura Glynn of Sarsfields will replace Sarah Healy of St. Thomas's, and the full back line then sees last year's all star Shauna Healy of Ardrahan, Sarah Durvin, the captain from Muller, wearing three, and uh, Dervila Higgins moves back into corner back position. And of course, you can see on our screen there she will wear four from Athan Roy. The changes from the last day, a few position switches then in the half back line from the last day. Siobhan Gardner then moves out to the wing of Ardrahan, Emma Helbert moves in from the wing to centre back of Balahadreen and Anne-Marie Starr moves from middle of the field to wing back of Kilimer at uh, centre field then Neve Hanafi as she did play even though she had six on her back she did play in midfield the last day uh, in the game against Clare of course she will wear eight today and will uh, line out there for Ormore Murray alongside Neve Kilkenny of uh, Pierce's then in the half forward line there is a change Noreen Cohn wearing number 22 of Athan Roy comes in to replace Neve McGrath of uh, Sarsfield Sarah Spellman continues her position from Sarsfields on the 40 and Aoife Dunhu will wear the number 12 shirt from Mulla and the full forward line then no change there Siobhan McGrath will wear 13 of Sarsfields Ailish O'Reilly of Ormer Murray will be in the full forward line and Catherine Finnerty then who had a fine game against Clare the last day from Mount Bellia Milo will be in the corner so those the Kilkenny and Galway teams Kilkenny of course managed by Brian Dowling Galway by Cahill Murray and we're just moments away from a throw in here with uh, referee John Dermody from Westmeath uh, Elaine a couple of late changes, probably you know an unusual one. See keepers change and, and so forth, but probably Cahill using it as an opportunity to give uh, Laura Glynn a bit of game time. Yeah, it is. It is an unusual one, obviously. But look, I suppose Laura will be anxious now that she's getting her chance. Maybe to it's a chance for her to put a little bit of pressure on Sarah. You know, Sarah is a superb keeper back there, but Laura taking her chance today, similar to the Kilkenny goalkeeper scenario. I suppose you know Emma Cavanaugh would have seen very little league time during the league or game time during the league and playing second Norris or second fiddle to Ethan Norris in the goal and yet when it came to championship she got her chance the first day and she has maintained that number one jersey so you know Laura will be anxious to do the same from a Galway point of view and you know again we keep talking about we talked about it before the game when you heard us here with the scenario like the, the scenario the situation find Galway in the year is a tricky one I would imagine you know because to come into it unbeaten they know they've qualified for the quarter final stages there's probably no manager Maybe apart from maybe Tipperary, in some cases, want to get you know would mind playing a quarter final match in some way. So you know, what do you learn from this game ultimately? Yeah, I suppose it's a little bit different maybe for for Galway and and Kilkenny. The same pressure is not on that has been on the last couple of times they've met. You know, they've met in league finals, met in All Ireland finals. So there's been huge pressure that day. I suppose Galway probably come to Kilkenny today with a little bit less baggage maybe and no pressure. At all they'll be looking for maybe is a big performance from their own girls and let the result take care of itself after that. But you know, from from both teams' point of view, I suppose if they can get a performance here today you know oftentimes you'd be going into knockout either be it league or be it championship quarter final or semi final saying that you haven't been tested whereas both teams now are going to get a chance to test themselves against the best in the country here today so they'll have a good idea of where they stand before they face knockout camogie yeah well just waiting on uh our own Levino shortly uh, for this game uh, nice little crowd has come to john locks it hopefully I think they said rain would be clearing down this direction, but uh, hopefully we've seen the last of it anyway for the next couple of hours. I'm looking off in all quarters here and I've not seen too many uh, rain showers or anything in passing, so hopefully it'll stay that way for the next hour and a half or thereabouts. As uh, Colin Murray now getting ready to come into position, he likes to take a seat up in the stand here, so waiting to see how the final couple of minutes will go. Backroom teams and the subs heading off the field now as uh, we're not too far away. We're still all in, you know, it is Championship Fair. It might be the last day unofficially of summer in lots of ways. A quick, the last few weeks have uh, gone around. But, um, you know, again, both laying down markers ultimately, isn't it? If uh, you see these sides clashing later on. Yeah, I think, you know, both teams are proven winners and they won't and even want to let that record slip today. We pause for Aron Naveen.
So, moments away here in uh, John Locke's in Callan for this clash between, of course, the last year's All Ireland finalists and, uh, of course, this year's league finalists. And two teams that have uh, got to know each other quite well, Elaine, haven't they? Yeah, look, they've been the top two teams in the country for the past number of years. And, you know, we'll both have aspirations, I suppose, of being there thereabouts again this year. So, you know, I'm sure that the tips and the corks of this world they're looking on maybe think with something to say about that. But certainly, you know, for Galway and Kilkenny, they have become very familiar with one another over the past number of years. And, you know, expect a, a huge battle here between the two of them again today. Don't know if it's a positive, but uh, different to last week, I see Carrie Dolan with us here, but she's not on crutches. I don't know if that we can allude to that being a positive, but uh, still obviously not able to take her place. And I know we haven't heard any other long-term mention of uh, Carrie's injury, so hopefully it's positive anyway, but we don't see her here with crutches today, so maybe that is a positive. As John Dermody gets ready, just to let you know, by the way, in the Kilkenny subs, if they do come on, uh, Leanne Finley is now wearing 20, and Sarah Crowley now wearing number 23. Aoife Prendergast or Lydia Fitzpatrick won't be taking part here today as John Dermody gets ready to throw the ball in, and the game is on here in John Locks, and it's uh, Kilkenny looking to get an early touch on that ball there, break of the hurl already with Steffi Fitzgerald. And it's Halliburton. Went down there to try and win that ball, a bit of a scrum over on the far side. Neve Kilkenny trying to dig it out there as well. And uh, Katie Nolan just watching her on the back of it. And hey, there she gets in, one of the most diminutive players in Kilkenny side. Gets in straight away and puts it into Miriam Walsh. That was some battle, of course, in the All Ireland final last year up against Durban. But uh, Healy is in there to try and disrupt this ball, getting it back out, trying to maybe get a touch on it for uh, Aoife Doyle. Back to Miriam Walsh, though. Ball dropped on the ground and eventually it's picked up and a chance for Galway to clear. Coming out with a heavy shoulder met there, but it's uh, dealt with rather well by Dervla Higgins and knocking a ball over to the far side of the field. Bit of a race going on here between Aoife Donoghue and uh, Megan Farrell. Ball breaks up for Donoghue and she looks in the scoop it inside. Referee says that she had been pulled across there and it's going to be a free in with uh, Kellyanne Doyle getting the blame there, I think it was. But uh, again, just goes to show you, everyone was uh, messing around with it. Katie Nolan just comes out of nowhere, takes the ball and just fires it in straight away to yeah, Maria Yeah, and what a championship she's had for Kilkenny today. You know, she's been outstanding in their first two games and has really carried the form she had in the league into the championship and has turned into a real key player up front for Kilkenny, especially at times maybe when they're not that dominant in the game. She seems to be the one player that's able to take the game to the opposition. So it's Ailish O'Reilly is going to take this out. There's a sizable breeze facing into uh, her at the moment. Uh, she's just over the halfway line. And it looks like it's uh, going to drop on the edge of the square. Dangerous ball. It's caught in there. For free says so. That it was a, a square ball. And you'd have to say maybe a little bit of naive of Noreen Cohen to get caught in there. But uh, well taken by Emma Kavanagh anyway. Former All-Star goalkeeper, of course, and the ball breaks and it's picked up by Grace Walsh, looking to play it inside. Didn't really have a chance to look at where she was putting it and uh, trying to, Derville Higgins trying to get it, but Gall now looking to step inside. Bit of his position switches for Kilkenny. Ball is dropped across now. Walsh up against Durvin. Battle Royal again there. Walsh holding off the attentions of Durvin, but the ball might slip there and fall for Gardner. Ball is on the ground, looking to dink it out. Now Gardner gets away from a bit of a gap. Could be an opportunity to give it to Dunahoo, but she likes to go a bit longer and give it to uh, centre forward Sarah Spellman. Spellman looking to touch it away there and get it away from Megan Farrell. Both fall to the ground. Looked like it might have been a free for Kilkenny. Ball is still uh, allowed to play on though and it's um, Farrell that digs it out. Looking to get a clearance out. Kilkenny from the back. Down over to the far side. Trying to get on this ball now. Steffi Fisher looking inside. Katie Nolan. Ball is uh, taken into the hand of Denise Gall. Looking with the wind behind her to drop this ball for the opening score of the game. Up and over the bar. Uh, Katie Nolan, I, I'm just impressed by her vision. She just, you know, no missing her own first time ball into the hand. Yeah, super ball across from Katie Nolan, but the control from Gaul on the end of the hurl then to take it on in front of Higgins and a super score from distance and really well worked score from Kilkenny on that occasion. Again, persistence by Megan Farrell over in that far side. They won that ball back. Ball breaks in the middle, kicking on by a Dunne who looks Kilkenny then the doubles on it, sends it towards O'Reilly. O'Reilly down and looking to take it into her hand. Gets away from the attentions. Ailish O'Reilly now has a little bit of pace, looking to step inside, looking to scoop it on. Chance opportunity now for Spellman. Spellman looking to get away from the attentions of Feeling, knocking the ball back, but it's taken up by Claire Feeling and looking to deliver it long. Could have been a question of a free there, but this ball now in loads of space now for Kilkenny. Looking to drop it long and high. It, uh, coming from uh, the Chance there.
from of course the number 18 Michaela Keneally ball is locked in looking opportunity in loads of space for Kilkenny to knock it over the bar Aoife Doyle that's a good score from Kilkenny but she was in acres of space yeah and the Galway back six I think caught a little bit there following their players maybe and caught a little bit watching the player rather than watching the ball that was developing and you know Michaela Keneally had a chance before that and Aoife Doyle had made the run the ball in wasn't great but you know Denise Gall again got possession of it and, and found Aoife Doyle in all the space over there Katie Nolan having some championship. She's having some game here in the opening five minutes. She's been on an awful lot of position as Michaela Keneally looks to get on this ball. We know she likes to drive long and hard with it being tracked all the way here by Gardner. Ball is flicked away expertly by Gardner, you'd have to say, and picked up by Kilkenny. Taking it up the far side. It's Kilkenny, Neve Kilkenny, one of the greats of Camogie, but it's knocked away from her and it's into position now of Kilkenny the county. Ball is on the move from the Cats looking to get there, but Dunhu is back to win this ball. Aoife Dunhu did very, very well there, looking to play this ball over to the far side now. What's her options? But it's a blocked by Katie Nolan took the long maybe into the sun to have a think about it ball breaks it could be picked up by Star. ball is on the ground Nolan is in there trying to disrupt the attentions of Dervla Higgins ball might roll out into Higgins hand and it does looking to pop the pass here now opportunity to get away Finnerty Finnerty looking to step inside she does it very very well gets away from the attentions Catherine Finnerty now looking to move this ball lovely little hop on the ground Finnerty still going look to have overstepped it John Dermody is letting her go though looking to get inside Farrell chance for Spellman knocking the ball on but the ball breaks and it's an opportunity for Kilkenny to clear it's back in the hands of Ailey Shaw Riley, ball hits the deck, still a chance for Kilkenny to get in there and it looks like it's eventually going to be cleared by Colette Dormer, ball is over to the far side of the field, bit of a race on the disruption of Michaela Keneally, she tried to get that, Gaul though, goes into, oh lovely pick up by Gaul, looking to flick the ball inside might work out here now, looking to get a touch on the door is uh, centre back Emma Hellebert time to step around now, Hellebert looking up the field breeze into her face, gets a nice little uh, ball across field here but it's going to be cut out by the opportunity here to clear by Claire Phelan, up along the wing now, into a bit of space now chance again for Kilkenny looking to step inside the attentions ball could be worked inside well there by uh, centre forward Mary O'Connell ball breaks back to O'Connell loses it over hand has to go back and think about it trying to get up there and uh, get some bit of attention Amory Star ball across towards Dervin and uh, Walsh this is a battle royal so far Dervin is judged to have foul and Miriam Walsh is picking up where she left off in the All-Ireland final last year. Absolutely, those two, we talk about the teams becoming familiar with one another, those two certainly are familiar with one another in on the edge of the square there. They've had some huge battles over the last couple of years and two big, strong, physical players on the edge of the square and, you know, Kilkenny have been quick to put the balls. Ball is taking a shot there. Didn't expect that. Maybe they've seen an opportunity with the, the heads kind of not fully in the game, but in fairness to Laura Glynn, she was aware of it. Yeah, I think Denise Gall just saw the opportunity. She saw maybe a little bit of slackness in the Galway defence and that they hadn't got numbers back on the line and, and went quick and, and ignored, walked straight past the referee to try and get a shot in. And credit to Laura Glynn, she was quick to the chance in there. Halbert forward now, trying to get this on to McGrath. McGrath looking to step around. The only one of the McGrath sisters on the field of play today is, uh, of course, in, in the corner forward, Siobhan McGrath. Ball breaks and it might work out for Dunhu. Looking to step inside the attentions of a couple of Kilkenny defenders. Back to Noreen Cohen in this game. Looking to get inside. Got a goal against Westmead. Ball drops to the deck down. It looks like Kilkenny are there in numbers. Kilkenny are hungry. There's no doubt about it. Defensively, look like they've overstepped it there. I would have thought that was overplayed and it's a free in and you'd have to credit the goal with the uh, forwards there. Yeah, it stood collect armour up really, really well and, you know, just cut out all options out for our enforcer to overcarry it there. And, you know, there's some huge battles in there again. Davina Tobin picking up Siobhan McGrath as she did in last year's All-Ireland final. Claire Phelan has moved out to right half-back. She's playing in the half-back line here with Megan Farrell and it looks like Kellyanne Doyle on the far side and Grace Walsh and Steffi Fitzgerald in the middle of the field. So a couple of changes all over the, the field for Kilkenny, but big matchups all over, I suppose, from both sides. Numbers mean nothing, of course, anymore. It's uh, all about getting their matchups right. And at the moment, it seems to be working in favour of uh, Kilkenny. But Galway have this chance. Noreen Cohen is the one, I think, getting a little bit. No, it's not Noreen. And she's up and she's OK. There is a Galway player getting attention over the far side. Tifa Dunhu, sorry. Just the 12 and the 22 catching me there. And Dunhu is up and the free going to be taken by Ailey Shirely. She taking the responsibilities here. We saw, of course, Siobhan McGrath and Eve McGrath take them in Kenny Park last weekend, but it's uh, Ailey Shirely. We got two points the last day up uh, to take this. An opportunity to tap it over the bar, and she does that very well. She had a long range effort that was just caught under the crossbar by uh, Emma Kavanagh. But it's a good score there from Ailey Shirely to open her account. Yeah, good start. And I said the first one probably just a little bit too far out for her into that strong breeze. But that one obviously a, an easier free and took it really well. And I suppose took on the responsibility from, from Siobhan and Eve McGrath, as you said last week. So I suppose just showing the absence of Carrie Dolan really. Galway have yet really to settle on a free taker. 
So puck up by Emma Cavanagh, the rower in Ishtig, over to the far side of the field and to be taken in by Kellyanne Doyle, ball back into the Kellett Dormer, Dormer juggled with it and now he's all over the scenario with McGrath and uh, Doyle, and uh, I should say Dunahoo getting in there, but she eventually gets a clear, long ball, look at the way the wind took that off and then the hop of the surface over on the far side, just because to show you the surface of pitches all over the country, still quite hard after uh, a lack of rain over the weeks, but I'm sure it made up for it in the last few days. Yeah, and that's another big battle I think that we're going to see develop over the years. Denise Gall and Derbla Higgins in there, you know, Higgins had a great game last week for Galway and, and Denise Gall is obviously such a huge player for Kilkenny, so, you know, whoever comes out on top of that battle will have a huge say in the game. Galway trying to get in and uh, win it. It looks like uh, Neve Hannafin might have got in there, got a touch and that back to Hellebert, back into the hand now with Kilkenny, took that down a longer hurl and they did a very, very well, good short interchange here and they might have been able to get out the gap and they have done it very, very well. Opportunity to keep from the back here, Amory Starr, off goes Haley O'Reilly, O'Reilly on the uh, Kilkenny uh, 65, looking to get forward, looking to take it in, the hurl goes to ground, looking to get away, Haley O'Reilly, it hops off her helmet, going to come back for the free. And uh, credit Ailey Shirely there, she did very, very well in uh, winning that free. And chance kind of big in there, she was being tracked by uh, a number of Kilkenny players, but eventually she was able to hold off the attentions of Aoife Doyle and win that free in that she's uh, going to take herself now. So standing about 50 odd metres out right in front of the black spot. She can get it now into that wind. She looks, she has got it very, very well. Right, that's a good score from Ailey Shirely into that breeze. Yeah, a good score for her and a good start for her. You know, obviously the first one a little bit further out didn't quite get the range in it, but looks to have mastered it. And as you said, into that breeze. So, you know, that bodes well for any freeze they may get in the second half. This breeze is helping Emma Cavanagh at the moment because it nearly gets to the 4 45. It breaks off to Katie Nolan, looks to roll it back to herself, try to get it up. The uh, boss of the hurl though is gone, that's a break of it, but it's got in here to Miriam Walsh, gets out in front of Durvin. Durvin all over the back there at the moment. Mer Walsh lost it, it's on the deck, and the referee said he's seen enough from Sarah Durvin that that's a free in. And uh, Miriam Walsh is a tricky enough customer now for Sarah to have to deal with for the next hour. Yeah, Miriam is a big presence on the edge of the square there, you know, strong physical player. And once she gets the ball in front of her, gets it into her hand, she's very hard to stop without fouling. And I suppose Dervin is a similar player for Galway, you know, strong physical player in there. So a huge battle in there. And nine times out of ten, I think the forward probably gets the nudge on those ones, certainly when they're in possession of the ball. And Miriam did really well on that occasion to, to win the free. Kenny back in front, three points to two, no miss, and from Galway this time they weren't slow getting players back in the line, so Denise Gall elected to put the ball over the bar, fine sunshine now here in John Locke Park, as the ball goes to the far side to Hannafee, the ball breaks and underneath it is Donahue looking to get away from uh, the attentions of Doyle, ball is played up along the wing now, chance for Sarah Spellman, ball breaks away from her and Megan Farrell, she gets it back to Spellman, pops a pass at Donahue, opportunity here now if she can spot Finnerty, ball was taken away though, and Kelly and Doyle maybe got a touch in there, ball is still though with uh, Neve Kilkenny this time, ball is on to Spellman, Spellman going through, rugby tackle to the ground, I think if you saw that in the Lions match you'd be quite happy. <laughs> That surely has to be a car there, I would have thought. The hands were in around. Yeah, if we were hurling, we'd probably be calling for a sin bin maybe and a, and a penalty. But I think Claire feeling well aware that, that Sarah Spellman had the momentum up. And to credit to Spellman, she'd taken you know, a couple of steps, maybe a couple of extra ones, but had huge momentum going forward. And, and Claire feeling coming from behind and, and pulled her down. Now I saw John's hand go up. I don't know if there was a card in it all. It was. Okay, thanks to our cameraman Shane. He spotted that. So, yellow card then for Claire Phelan and a chance for Ailey Shirely to level things up here. Puts the ball up and over the bar and Ailey Shirely, well, she's hitting those place balls well anyway. Yeah, and the Galway forwards look to be get to, getting to grips with the Kilkenny backs for a while there. The Kilkenny backs were, were winning those 50-50 balls and were, were able to come out kind of uncontested. But Galway have certainly tightened up there now and they are putting more pressure on Kilkenny and asking more questions of them. Three points apiece, three from Ailey Shirely, three place balls, Denise Gall is 2-1 from uh, free, and Aoife Doyle the other score for Kilkenny. Galway may be starting to get the grips now, ball over to the far side, it's going to cause more hassle to the Kilkenny dugout than it is to anyone on the field of play. And uh, Brian Dowling throws that ball back into Clare Field in here, but John Dermody is saying bring the ball across. He's calling it back I think for a free, he's blown Denise Gall for a free on Sean Healy as she was coming out there. He signalled a chop, I think, and I think Shauna gave him a bit of a, a nudge to encourage him to, to, to blow up, but I didn't see the advantage, but he had put up, um, he had acknowledged it, so calling it back for the free. 
No well, breeze never win you a match, but uh, it's a fairly significant breeze that is blowing into the face of the Galway players at the moment. As this ball is played across field from that Galway free, knocked down by Megan Farrell, going to be picked up here now by Katie Nolan, playing it down along the wing, but it's uh, Neve Hanafy that's underneath it. Time to take it, but the ball falls out of her hand, being tracked there at the moment by Michaela Keneally, loses the grip of it. Hanafi looking to step inside, looking to pop the pass, looking to change the ball and move on here with Siobhan Gardner. The Ardrahan player looking to play a diagonal ball across now, looking for the run of McGrath, looking to be tracked on here now by Davina Tobin. Tobin wins the race, looking to spin the ball back up into her hand, and she does, knocking it down along the wing, but it breaks off of Siobhan McGrath, and it's going to be a sideline cut for Kilkenny. And again, that's going to be an interesting tussle between Davina and Siobhan McGrath. Yeah, exactly. Two players, as I said, so familiar with one another, again, from the last couple of years, and, and two that are certainly often matched up together. But just feel the Galway backs maybe growing into this game a little bit at present, and they're just starting to get out and get their clearances a little bit of the pop pasta that, that's so, you know, that they're so looking to find the, the player running off their shoulder. Ball eventually makes it upfield towards Denise. Mary O'Connell plays the ball back to her and Denise then goes down into the corner where she's expecting the speed of Katie Nolan getting inside uh, Anne-Marie Starr. Ball is going to be picked up by Nolan. But she'll think about goal here. No, the chance is cut off, but she'll elect to tap it over the bar. Katie Nolan has won seven in the championship so far. Make that one eight and that's a fine score. Yeah, a really good score from Katie Nolan. You know, there's a lot asked of her, I suppose. Ball down into space there. Did really, really well off to, to hold off the attentions of Anne-Marie Starr and then cut inside. Think about, thought about a goal, I think, on occasion, but decided to opt for the point instead. And now there's a bit of a stoppage in the play here. Lions woman has called John Dermody's attention to an incident that happened, I think, between Catherine Finnerty and... Uh, Claire Phelan is the Kilkenny player on the ground. Yeah. So, if the Lions woman has seen, she's telling Colin Murray now what she saw. Colin Murray is going to ask what card it is. It's up to John Dermody. It's red. And judging by the crowd here as well, they were not, they were convinced as well that there was no other thing for it. I know it might be a, a partisan crowd, but they were convinced it was not the Nelson E. Red card. Yeah, and credit to the Lions woman on this occasion. She did really, you know, she called the player straight away, or called the referee's attention to it straight away and just on the stroke of the water break, but she didn't seem to be in any doubt as to what she had seen. So that's a bit of a blow for Galway, you'd have to say. Four points to three, doing quite well into the breeze. Ailey Shirelli seemed to be getting to grips with things. And, uh, you know, Catherine Finnerty looking to shake off the attentions of uh, of Claire Phelan. You know, obviously was in the tussle, was in loads of space then because she had obviously dug back at Claire Phelan. Phelan was on the ground. The ball came out to her all right, but uh, Lions won't call John Dermody's attention. Sending off. Now we have the water break and Colin Murray has to work quickly to kind of realign things here. Yeah, and look, from a Galway point of view, I suppose if there is a good time to go down to 14 players, it is on the break, stroke of the water break, and it gets them, gets them time to, to, I suppose, to reorganise themselves and, and decide what they're going to do. And as same from a Kilkenny point of view, they, they now have the couple of minutes or the minute at the water break to decide where they're going to play their spare player. So, you know, it's been a hugely entertaining, a hugely, you'd say, physical, you know, good-natured battle up to now. And obviously I didn't see that the... the exact instant but John Darmody and the Lions person obviously thought between them they, they had seen enough and, and knew what they what they were blown for and you know Galway obviously do face a huge battle now but you know they have that win be, in, behind them in the second half. John Dermody and his officials are having a word uh, man there of course from the uh, backroom team from Galway. <laughs> Not uh, overly happy with John Dermody, but uh, I don't think there was any doubt from what uh, we've been told here. Don't know if you saw the incident clearly. I was kind of watching the puck out. Yeah, no, I'd been watching <laughs> Casey Nolan's excellent point just before that and then watching the puck out. But look, I don't think there's any point in, in Galway talking to the referee about it now. He's obviously not going to change his mind. So I suppose it's about how they react to it now and how they set up. And you know, well, you'd have to credit the official on this side. She was quite adamant uh, what she saw, quite clear, went over to John Dermody exactly, and he made his mind up from there. Yeah, you know? from an official point of view, you'd have to say they handled it very well. You know, the flag went up, called his attention, dealt with it quickly and, and blew the water break. So, you know, it may not unsettle Galway now they've had the minute to, to reset, but it'll be interesting to see how the game develops from here.
Grace Walsh wins that ball, gives it on to Keneally. Of course, it's 15 Kilkenny against 14 Galway, and it's all about now how Galway deal with it. Walsh didn't get time to pick it up, and she just flicks it inside. Thanks for Glynn to be able to send this ball over to the, this side of the field. Laura Glynn, of course, is in goal for Galway in place of Sarah Healy. Ball is out over the line here, and it's uh, cleared, and it's going to be Kilkenny sideline ball. Pity, in a way, for Grace Walsh there, she didn't get it up first time. Yeah, it's a pity from, from a Kilkenny point of view. They started really, really well, and that move was really, really well created. You know, Grace sent in the initial ball, got up for the, the pass back, just went a little bit over, I suppose, and then just failed to get it, and maybe just pulled on a little bit of frustration at that stage. But it looks to be building up to be a really good move from Kilkenny, and they'll be disappointed not to have got a score on the board from it. Denise Skull missed the one in the first time, but she got to the second and played it inside. Touch of the course, so she was well able to take it again. But uh, Dervin won that battle with Miriam Walsh and flicked it up, but it's been taken on here as Aoife Doyle, or Aoife Dunne, who tried to be too, too clever with it, sent in and over the bar. And if that isn't a hammer to the heart in some way, great score by Kellyanne Doyle. Yeah, and a real trademark Kellyanne Doyle score down the wing like that and into space, you know, a really, really speedy player. And, you know, she wasn't going to be outfoxed by Aoife Dunne, who over there knocked the ball down and, and took on and took on the score and a super score for Kilkenny. But if you're Galway now, you've got to kind of just keep things settled to the break nearly and maybe even get realigned then again. You don't want Kilkenny to be gone over the hill, do you? No, and there has been a bit of an onslaught, I suppose, since that water break. It has been all Kilkenny. I know we've only had maybe a minute or two of play, but it has been all Kilkenny possession. So, you know, Galway will need to settle now quick and maybe not let Kilkenny get into a stride. Yeah, and Kilkenny, just as a forward unit, seem to be defending and uh, attacking and pressuring in, in packs but that ball is a bit loose there sent in by Michaela Keneally and it's the first wide I think of the game for uh, of the whole game I think we have here and uh, that comes there from probably a low a high percentage shot in some ways you know it was a bit wasteful in some ways yeah it was a bit wasteful and I suppose that's the danger when you're maybe a player up and you're playing with the breeze everyone's inclined to maybe take on the shot and take on a bit of the pressure themselves and maybe not always take the right option on that occasion Michaela probably should have played the ball across Gardner trying to get that ball on, but it's Grace Walsh that cuts it out and plays it inside to the other red-helmeted Katie Nolan. Giving it to Mary O'Connell as loads of time uh, towards the right hand upright. Ball comes off the crossbar. Flicked out as Sarah Healy's got to be alert to it there. Bit of uh, the crossbar and the flick off the hurl of Glynn. And eventually Sarah Healy gets the ball out, but it's Denise Gall trying to get up and disrupt. And restart started well. Back out to Helbert. Helbert crashed into the Kilkenny player. No. Nothing wrong there, says the referee. He's happy to let the play continue. And it is uh, played out by Dervla Higgins. Again, Galway just taking too much out of it there, trying to get it out from wing back position. Eventually, the ball played forward, but uh, asking an awful lot now of uh, Noreen Cohen to try and get away there. Ahead of that ball against Claire Phelan, but Phelan won it. But Donahue looks to get it back. Tried to be too clever with flicking that ball to her as she was gone kind of ahead of the ball a little bit. But Galway have turned it back over, looking to send it towards McGrath. Oh, lovely stick work by, uh, of course, Siobhan McGrath looking to get away. Hopper be happy with that one. She's still going, looking to draw the foul. No fouls to John Dermody, surrounded there by Phelan and uh, Farrell, and eventually coughed up and looking to get it clear here now. Ara Kilkenny. Look at the step around to Katie Nolan, it is everywhere. She's covered every blade of grass in John Lux. I know, we only have however many minutes we have played, but back there helping out her defence, you know, would have played centre-back for a number of years in the Kilkenny Intermediate team as well, so she's no stranger to that position, but really is putting herself all over the field for Kilkenny today. Miriam Walsh getting in there, and uh, I think Dervin might have just won that uh, battle there for the moment, but Mary O'Connell tried to get in there and win it, but it was a little bit tight to the line, and it's going to be a sideline cut for a goal away. Yeah, and from a Kilkenny point of view, they're utilising Claire Phelan now back at centre back as that spare player and, you know, a super player to play that position, a really good reader of the ball, super striker, and, you know, Galway will obviously look to avoid her at all costs down there. Yeah, so Claire is the uh, free player, as you can say it, and uh, well capable of playing that role. And Sturvla Higgins plays the ball in, it looks like Kilkenny get a little bit too close to one another there, Denise Gall. I may be happy with herself there. She tried to win that ball. Steffi Fitzgerald probably just unlucky. Momentum and everything like that carrying them into each other. And it's a sideline cut for Galway. Just cause to show you, this game might mean nothing. And some people might say it means an awful lot to a lot of players out there. And just have right little tension in it, isn't it? Yeah, you know, familiarity breeds contempt, I suppose. And when you have two teams, you know, who both know that they're going to be at the business end of the year, both anxious to lay down a marker. Steffi Fisher without her hurl played the ball. Grace Walsh was looking for it, but instead she gave it to Katie Nolan. Kelly Ann Doyle coming forward. And wow. I could feel it from here. And uh, I'm sure Aoife Dunne who feels it. 
And that, that battle has been peppering along there and it's a yellow card for Kellyanne Doyle. Yeah. Some of the Galway crew are not happy with that decision. Um, I'd like to see it again if you could. To be fair to Kellyanne Doyle, I think she was kind of blindsided coming out of the tackle. You know, I don't think she saw, fully saw Aoife Dunhu in front of her. And, you know, it was a it was a head 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 to head collision. Both players getting some attention there, but I'm not sure there was any particular malice in it. I think it was a well. Your two players are not going to stand back. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> there's no room no room for standing back out there today. Well, Aoife Dunhu is suggesting that maybe there was an elbow led, leading with the elbow. I don't know. We just haven't got a replay to be able to see it, but. Anyway, Kellyanne Doyle has picked up a yellow card. That's the second yellow card in the Kilkenny defence. We've already got a red card as well with uh, Catherine Finnerty. I feel we may see another one or two before the game is out. Yeah. He's uh, trying to get inside. Sarah Spellman getting away from the attentions of Dealey. Referee said that she was fouled. And that's a good bit of play by Sarah Spellman. Been impressed enough with her in this game. Yeah, she's made a couple of driving runs at the heart of the Kilkenny defence. And another one there, you know, she drew that free from Claire Phelan earlier and dropped the shoulder really, really well there and drew the free again from Bamberg. So, you know, she's had a good start to this game and has really, you know, run at the heart of the Kilkenny defence when she's given the opportunity. So, Ailish O'Reilly with her fifth shot at goal. Her first one dropped just into the hands of Emma Kavna. She's got to measure the previous three, and that's her uh, fine score. Ailish O'Reilly taking on responsibility of the free taking today, and she's doing it well. Yeah, and I suppose worrying maybe from a Galway point of view is that their four points have all come from frees. You know, they haven't been able to, to get a shot at the post from play and you know, haven't really been able to create anything up front, and that was up to the point maybe where they didn't have an extra defender to, to contend against back there. Five points to four as uh, Anne-Marie Starr tries to uh, win that ball but Grace Walsh all over looking to get inside. Kilkenny though is uh, with her there. Dervin gets out to win that ball. The Walsh cousins try to keep it together but Sarah Dervin maybe is just starting to win this battle with Miriam Walsh. Ball is broken down uh, by uh, Hanafi there from the shot that was coming in from Steffi Fitzgerald. Dervin went to get across but she's fouled there and Sarah Dervin maybe just maybe starting to stamp her authority back there. Yeah, you know, I suppose she's a real leader on that Galway team and this is the time when Galway will need leaders to stand up and certainly brought some of that authority and that leadership there with that last ball. Ball over here now, trying to get uh, find it for Sarah Dillman, but Dealey gets a and knocks a touch down along the wing. Miriam Walsh had her hand up for it, now she's got to go charge for it. Grace Walsh is minus her helmet at the moment, don't know what happened there. Miriam Walsh turns it inside, Grace might be just off to play at the moment, but looking to charge out with it here now. Our Galway looking to flick it into the hands here of Hellebert, time to drive it up along the uh, wing side. Galway doing okay, considering they're down to 14. Noreen Cohn winning that ball, popping the pass back to Sarah Spellman. Spellman looking to go on a diagonal run, getting inside Megan. Farrell, Farrell holds her up, ball into O'Reilly, going to have a shot off, ball is uh, broken away done, Kellyanne Doyle is there, giving it inside to Dormer, ball could be flicked out, Megan Farrell, time to step around the house and have a look at a cross field, does, Maureen Walsh is on a bit of a run if this goes over the top of the head, but that's uh, one done by Dervla Higgins there, ball back to Hellebert, diagonal ball, cross field now, looking for Dunahu in a bit of a race here, looking to get there, will the ball win it to the line, looks like it's going to be dealt with from a Kilkenny point of view, ball is turned up, but Dunahu is all over it, Cohen and Dunahu now, might be able to link up here, Dunhu of Muller looking to get inside with the help of Cohn from Matt and Roy. Ball is on the ground and it's uh, Cohn looking to step back around the house. Back out to O'Reilly. O'Reilly a little bit high for. Ball might break and it suits Kilkenny. It's Gaul. Steps right and left and then gets away on their left hand side. Steps inside again. Still going Gaul. This would be something else if she was to have a shot off at this. Ball is sent in low but it's going to trickle all the way through to the goalkeeper. And you'd have to say, Elaine, since the, you know, Galway went down to 14, you'd expect a bit more out of Kilkenny in some ways. Yeah, they just haven't been able to make a counter. I suppose on the scoreboard they'd have the possession out the field but you know credit to the Galway forwards they're asking serious questions of the Kilkenny back six there and you know Kilkenny not being able to dominate on the scoreboard as you'd expect they may have as you said with the player up. Pressure from Neve Kilkenny there on the uh, Kilkenny defence but it's Grace Walsh it's time to deliver that Davina Tobin was uh, winning that position for Kilkenny ball knocked long Sean Healy now got to be careful being tracked all the way there by Aoife Doyle has a point to her name Healy gets inside looking to get away from uh, the attentions of uh, Katie Nolan it's Kil Neve Kilkenny that wins that ball chance now for uh, Higgins to come out looked like there was a chance of a failed trip there ball is won now by Hanafi into the middle it looks like uh, Galway have the extra man at the moment or the extra player you should say or the extra woman it doesn't matter it's uh, getting on forward here now with Ailish O'Reilly looking to step away from Kellyanne Doyle Ailish really growing into this game ball flicked back lovely bit of skill chance for Donahue to drop it in Kavna has it though in her hand and it's a ball to flick it out here to the wing going to be tracked here now Davina Tobin got to be careful Siobhan McGrath coming up to this McGrath looking to disrupt her Tobin the all star of last year sending the ball down along the wing flicked away by Emma Hellebert 
from uh, Michaela Keneally and the ball is out over the line of course Kilkenny two changes from the start of the game Colette Dormer and Michaela Keneally in for Michelle Teen and Miriam Bambrick there was two changes for Galway Laura Glynn in for Sarah Healy and Noreen Cohn replacing Neve McGrath and there's a uh, stoppage in play as uh, Grace Walsh I think I don't know whether she picked up an injury she took off the helmet now twice and uh, she's just looking for a little bit of attention and I'm just wondering is she feeling herself out there yeah, she just didn't really recover, I think, from that last long run in she made on the right hand side there. The ball just ran away from her near the end and Eve Kilkenny got back for a flick. So whether there was any contact or whether it's just maybe looking to catch her breath. Probably a bit of a welcome respite for some of the players out there as well. We've had the water break already, um, but the game is cat and mouse here at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, it certainly is. Look, I and mean, we think we, that last passage you played there, we saw some of the glimpses of, of what Galway are capable of and, and what kind of a game that they're looking to play. You know, they built really, really well from the back. Lovely little pop passes off the shoulder and they built up really, really well and it got to Ailish O'Reilly at the far end, ready to take the shot and a super hook maybe from Claire Feeling then and Colette Armour had had a hook on her in the passage of play previous to that. So, you know, both sides creating chances and, you know, credit to both sets of backs. They seem to be on top at the moment and neither set to four is able to make it really count on the scoreboard. Grace Walsh is up. She's been checked on by the, the doctor here. Dr. Martin O'Brien out with, of course, the uh, nurse, Grace Walsh. And uh, Grace looks like happy enough to continue anyway. It would take a good bit in fairness to keep her down. So. True. <laughs> Denise called him with this sideline cut just in front of the Galway dugout here, not too far from us in our commentary position. And she gets a cut inside, but it's uh, not a great one. Hanafi tried to get it, and it goes out off of uh, Kilkenny's Aoife Doyle, and it's going to be a sideline cut for Galway. A lot of sidelines on this side of the field. Yeah, and Denise Gall just not really getting under them today for Kilkenny. You know, the first one was one that she, she missed on the first occasion. That one, again, she wouldn't be too happy with. So probably testament to the grass here and how well it's cut. So Galway down to 14 after the sending off of Catherine Finnerty just on the water break and since the water break it's just a point apiece. Five points to four. Shawnee Healy with a nice one up towards Cohn. Cohn went to double on it there with Claire Feeling, but the ball breaks into the hands of Dormer. Dormer looking to play it in field. Nice ball. Oh, great call by Megan Farrell. Turns on it straight away and gives it off here now to Miriam Walsh from distance. This will be some score. Miriam Walsh, the score of the game. Dormer into Megan Farrell on to Miriam Walsh cracking score yeah and initially even the way Claire Feeling left that ball beat herself and her player knowing that Dormer was in behind her but the vision of Dormer to see Megan Farrell and the accuracy of the pass out for you know a girl coming back from a thumb injury that maybe hasn't done a whole lot of hurling in the last couple of weeks to, to place a ball like that and then Megan Farrell's ball down to Mary Welch and you know has obviously drifted out from the edge of the square maybe for a break from Sarah Dervin and what a shot from distance. All of a sudden Kilkenny have woken up, Kellyanne Doyle looking, or uh, Aoife Doyle I should say, looking to get away and spin this ball up and over the bar and that's two fine scores. Yeah, two super scores from Kilkenny and again another trademark Doyle score down the wing and you know has huge, huge pace and, and was able to burn off Emma Helbert there with, with ease and get the shot over off her right hand side and Kilkenny just looking maybe now to, to push on before the break. Brian Dowling even happy with that. Credit Neva Doy with a great score. Seven points to four. Just creates a bit of a gap. We've come as we come up towards half time. I'd imagine we'll have a little bit of stoppage time as Noreen Cohen picks up this ball around the middle. Looking to play a diagonal ball towards Siobhan McGrath. Aoife Doyle has gone in, but it gets away from McGrath. And Davina Tobin has the race here. Dormer's there to help her out. But Tobin elects to go right and come on down along the field here. Looking to pop a pass inside. Giving it to Farrell. Farrell looking to step away from the attentions of Neve Kilkenny. Down along the wing here. It comes off of uh, Michaela Keneally. Going to be a sideline ball here for Galway again. As I said, there's been an awful lot of sidelines on this side of the field. But two cracking scores in the last uh, minute there from uh, Kilkenny. Has seen them stretch a little bit of a gap here. Fine score from Miriam Walsh from uh, her own 65. Or I should say the goal was 65 and then Aoife Doyle with a trademark effort. Up here it goes Hayley Shirely. Been tracked by Gall, been tracked by Farrell. Looking to scoop it. She does. Noreen Cohn has a bit of a gap here. Referee does electing to call it back because he reckoned Cohn wasn't going to win the race there with Kellyanne Doyle and Colette Dormer. So it's going to be a free to Hayley Shirely. Carl Murray was asking John Dermody how long is left. And uh, we're only on the 31st minute going heading to the 32nd minute. So I'd imagine even there's going to be a little bit more so, Eilish O'Reilly with this opportunity. 
Yeah, and Galway have been able to cause the Kilkenny defence problems when they have ran at them on those occasions. They've they've pulled the free every time and, and drawn the foul, and you know that's really what's kept them in touch is the frees from Ailish O'Reilly. Ailish O'Reilly, the umpires are going for the flags there, puts that ball over the bar. The even so certain on the scoreboard they had it up before the umpire put his flag up. But Ailish O'Reilly on the 32nd minute has five points in this first half, and those are all of Galway's points. Ball breaking uh, in the direction of Denise Gall, but it's uh, flicked out there by Anne Marie Starr. It's out over the line, but uh, the official on this side says it is a Galway ball. And uh, I'd say if you had money for the amount of times it's been over our side of the field here, which is not a bad complaint, I suppose, but it has been enough lot of ball on, over over the line, and it's another one for Shauna Healy. Seven yeah. five then. The breeze, probably whatever breeze is there, is probably blowing a little bit from obviously left to right, but obviously into this side of the field, and that's what's keeping a lot of the play on this side. Really then, with the cut, straight into the midriff of Grace Walsh and out over the line. John Dermody, probably saying, Grace, you're a bit too close to that one. Neve Kilkenny in there as well, Healy to come up to this. Again, as we see on the sideline here, Heather Cooney, Carrie Dolan, Orla McGrath, Katrina Cormican, four players you'd imagine would be on this Galway team. If it wasn't for injury, that ball comes out of the hand of Ailey O'Reilly, remonstrating with the lineswoman, and John Dermody says no, it came off the foot there, and he spotted it, he's overruled it. Came off the Kilkenny foot, he says, lineswoman just maybe may have been a little blindsided there. So Neve Kilkenny with this uh, sideline cut, I think. She's just gone missing there now because she's <laughs> in uh, the way of that Galway dugout. You might just see her head now pop out. Referee asking for Steffi Fitzgerald and Neve Hanafi to go back. Neve Kilkenny with this cut, plays it, oh, intelligent ball inside. Maybe Anne-Marie Starr wasn't alert to it, but one player that was alert to it, Noreen Cohen and Aoife Dunhu. It's Aoife Dunhu now looking to play on this ball. Referee says she overplayed it. Oh, I thought she might have got a bit of sympathy there because there was three Kilkenny players around her. She hadn't too, too many areas to go. No, and credit to them. I think, you know, they, they stood her up well and, and didn't foul. They didn't get the bodies in. They just stood her up and, you know, she had jinked back and looked for the out ball out behind but didn't get it and forced the over carry from Kilkenny. And I suppose that's the danger when, when Galway are running ball in stack Kilkenny back. So now Kilkenny have that extra back and have that extra body. They can commit to the tackle. Denise Gall going to have a strike at this. She gets it up good and high. She's allowing the wind to carry it. Dropping the ball in. And just against that right hand upright over the bar. Fine score from uh, inside her own 65. Yeah, there is a strong breeze out there. You know, Denise, fantastic striker of the ball from distance anyway. So with that breeze behind her, she certainly would have backed herself to, to go for the post. And just to push Kilkenny ahead on the halftime whistle. Yeah, pushes him back out to that three point D, then eight points to five. The water break, it was four points to three, and Cahill Murray was having to respond to the scenario that uh, saw uh, Catherine Finnerty uh, given a red card for an off the ball incident that uh, uh, saw some kind of an incident with Claire Feeling anyway but before a uh, particular puck out. Referee then. As he said, centre off. Galway seemed to be dealing with matters, uh, Elaine. But uh, then two fine scores from Kilkenny within a minute and another long range effort there, you know, to just extended out the lead a little bit. Yeah, Galway had looked to have come to terms, but, you know, they were able to keep tabs on Kilkenny. Maybe, you know, both sets of defences probably on top a little bit and, and scores not that freely come to come by. And then when they did come, they came in the form of two fantastic scores, as he said, that long range effort from Merriam and then the, the run down the wing here and the, the shot off our right from, from Aoife Doyle just in front of us here down to the right hand side so you know two super scores when they did come and that's really the cushion that Kilkenny have now going in at half time you know so chance I suppose for Galway to regroup in at half time now and you know they'll have that breeze in the second half and Kilkenny you know maybe three points up but still a, a huge task in that second half even with the player yeah, it's, go it's going to be interesting to see, you know, the, as we said, a breeze never won you anything, but it's definitely having an input on, uh, you know, where puckouts are ultimately landing because they're they're getting to practically the 45 metre line at the other end of the field. Yeah, and I suppose that's something that maybe, you know, Galway will miss Sarah Healy for, you know, she has a massive pocket and with that breeze behind her, it would have been a, a real launch pad for a lot of Galway attacks. And as I said, they are getting some, some credit when they are running at the Kilkenny defence. You know, they're drawing fouls and they're creating overlaps, creating frees and they're getting the chance then to slot the points over the bar from Ailish O'Reilly's free taking. But, you know, maybe with the wind behind them now, they'll have to play a little bit ball a little bit longer in on this occasion, but they will have to be clever as, you know, Kilkenny have that spare player back there, be it Claire Feel and Colette Dormer or Megan Farrell, whichever of them ops to, to play as the spare player. But, you know, three 
very hugely experienced players and, and really well organised players that will control the backs there. So, you know, the Galway ball that's going in will have to be really intelligent ball. So just looking at uh, the Kilkenny or the Galway subs, I should say here, there's uh, Neve McGrath and uh, at the other end we'll see Sarah Healy. So they were the two changes before the game, Laura Glynn and Noreen Cohen coming in for them respectively. Uh, you mightn't see a goalkeeper change during a game unless it's an injury, but we might see Neve McGrath also looking there at Roisin Black, Maria Cooney and Kira Murphy. They'd be three maybe you'd expect to see if this game uh, you know, gives an opportunity maybe for Cahill Murray to run in those subs. He's not afraid, you know, we've seen him in the uh, group stages in, in the matches, not afraid, you know, to give his players from, you know, 16 to 21 or two, probably even their chance. Yeah, look, in fairness, I think they've had a, a strong panel and, and that's something that you'd be looking to build and they have used a lot of players, I suppose, throughout the league and throughout the first couple of championship games. So, you know, on any given day, you don't know what's going to happen in a game down to 14 players today. It may be one of those subs that you're looking to come in, make an impact and, and play a different type of game if that's what's required so you know I suppose any girl who's in the subs there today will be anxious to get in at some stage knowing that you know there's a championship quarter final or semi final team to be picked in three weeks time and they'll be looking to have their name on that team sheet. Right well some of the kids and uh, well some a few a bit older as well having a chance to poke around here at uh, John Locke so here at half time of the All-Ireland Senior Camogie Championship Group 3 round 3 some people might have called this a dead rubber some people might have said they had nothing to play for Far from it. That first half has been helter skelter with a sending off and a few yellow cards and uh, a few old scores being probably settled as well out there. It is though the Cats who are the All Ireland champions, the league champions as well, who lead last year's All Ireland finalists and league finalists from this year, Galway, by eight points to five. Rejoin us shortly for the second half.
And welcome back to John Locke Park. And just seeing Kilkenny coming back out in the field. Let's just fill you in on uh, some of the other games in Group One. Wexford play Tipperary tomorrow. That's our feature game here on the uh, Camogie Association YouTube channel. Uh, join Elaine and uh, Darren Kelly will be on duty from Simple Stadium. Uh, tomorrow afternoon so the hollowed turf of simple stadium will get to see wexford and tipperary that again of course just uh, to decide who tops the table uh, elsewhere in group one today uh, limerick and offley played out a close fought battle but it was limerick to come out on top in the end by 17 points to 2-9 so limerick safe in senior camogie for next year and uh, offley will uh, of course have to be now in the draw of the relegation they're not done yet either because uh, that relegation draw of course three bottom teams in each group go into the draw one is safe two will end up in a playoff half time in group two it is cork 2-8 waterford 2-4 down five points at Dublin, four points. So again, whoever wins the Cork Waterford game will top the table. Whoever loses the Dublin down game will find themselves in relegation trouble. And in Group Three, half time here, it is eight points to five, as you can see in the screen. But Clare are safe in uh, Senior Camogie Championship for next year. They defeated Westmead by two twelve to twelve points. Of course, Westmead and Offaly will learn their fate tomorrow. That draw for the uh, quarterfinals and the relegation uh, scenario will be made on our official stream tomorrow afternoon so if you are um, interested in the Camogie Championship and how it's going to continue with the quarterfinals and the relegation scenarios over the next uh, couple of weeks well make sure you're tuned in after tomorrow's game between Tipperary and Wexford and that draw will be made live on our official stream here from Simple Stadium again commentary from two o'clock of Tipperary and Wexford with Darren Kelly and Elaine Aylward not to look forward to in that game, I suppose, tomorrow. Just to see maybe where Wexford are pitting themselves with regards to taking on one of the top four teams. Exactly, yeah. Wexford coming up from Division 2, you know, and had been peppering along nicely there, I suppose, and, and were ultimately beaten by down in the league and, you know, have had a good championship to, gate, to date, look to be goal-hungry and look to be putting up big scores. So, you know, be interesting to see them and, you know, tip a team, you know, many talk about as the, t the fourth team in the senior group at the moment and looking to push on from from there so you know they'll be looking to get another big performance to back up their two wins today so you know two teams I suppose that could do with a bit of a confidence boost and look to maintain their unbeaten run coming into knockout Camogie then later in the in the year. So just getting back into the action here John Dermody getting ready the Westmead official Players back out on the field. And we're up and running. All across over here towards Aoife Dunahoo. We'll have the joys of watching uh, herself and Kellyanne fight it out here in the second half. Ball breaks and uh, Steffi Fitzgerald tried to kick it towards Dealey but it's won by Sarah Spellman. Spellman looking to get it on here towards uh, Neve Kilkenny but uh, had to take it in the second half and uh, give it forward here now towards Aoife Dunhu. Galway will defend of course the dressing room in here of John Locke Park tried to get the ball forward here but she was fouled by Kellyanne Doyle. It's going to be a free in by John Dermody. Clear motion there that she got a push in the back. Chance for Ailish O'Reilly but probably her most difficult free to date. Yeah and I suppose just trying to gauge the wind a little bit now as well in this, on this, in this half. So not an easy free to start with certainly for her but Aoife O'Donoghue using all her experience there just to, to nip in ahead of Kellyanne Doyle and, and force the free and probably knew it was coming so uh, a little bit naive maybe from Kellyanne to rush in but certainly a chance for Galway So bit of a stoppage here to Galway player that's injured The last thing Galway need now is really any more injury uh, issues, although they do have, uh, of course, Roisin Black and Tara Kenny and those to come in maybe in the backs if needed. Yeah, I just think maybe a knock to the knee for, for Emma Helbert, maybe a, a collision more than anything else. There was a, a clash of bodies there not so long ago around the middle of the field, and I think she may just have come out the worst of that. So, chance for... Ailish O'Reilly to have this shot. Has she put it up and over the bar? She has. 
Good nod there from uh, the umpire. Yeah, and I suppose from a Galway point of view, you know, if they've learned nothing else today for, from the game, they've learned that they have a free taker. You know, if Carrie Dolan is not going to be back in the team to come championship quarterfinals or semi-finals, that they do have a free taker and a dependable one in Ailish O'Reilly. Ailish O'Reilly with her six point, and that's uh, all of Galway's scores. That might be just the other concern, though, that uh, they have, you know, really offered very little elsewhere. Yeah, and I suppose the, the two ways of looking at that is they were creating the chances maybe and drawing the fouls from Kilkenny. You know, a couple of those frees were created from strong runs by Sarah Spellman through the heart of the Kilkenny defence and forcing the Kilkenny backs maybe to, to foul and to give Ailish O'Reilly the opportunity to put them over then from frees. O'Reilly looking to play this punt, this ball in low. McGrath looking to come out and try and win it. The ball breaks. Tifa Dunno, she just happened to be on it, gets away from the attentions of um, Claire Phelan, or so she thought. And back in there, Kellyanne Doyle to flick it out to Phelan in a little bit of space. Don't forget, Kilkenny have an extra player sent off with Catherine Finnerty after uh, about a quarter of an hour. Miriam Walsh, who got the score of the game so far, looking to charge forward. Looking to pop a pass here now. Chance for Steffi for sure. Looking to play it in long. Dangerous ball in. Shawnee Healy though. Looking to hold off the attentions of Aoife Doyle. She did that very, very well. And it's only the second wide of the game. Both of them have gone to Kilkenny. Yeah, Kilkenny probably be a little bit disappointed with that. You know, super hook from Claire Phelan. With what looked like a gift edge. Aoife O'Donoghue opportunity on the other end. And they just failed to make a count then. Worked the ball really well. But probably just took the wrong option then at the wrong time. Oh, Aoife O'Donoghue of Mullia trying to win that ball. Ball was taken away from him. Megan Farno trying to hold off Neve Kilkenny. Farrell falls to the ground, which he might have done enough to get it to Dealey. Ball breaks though. Hanafi trying to get in and roll, lift it up. Scoops it somehow to Ailish O'Reilly. O'Reilly, lovely ball here now. Into McGrath. McGrath, she gets inside the beatings of Tobin. Looking to hit the deck. Tobin is all over her back. McGrath looking to go. McGrath still going. Looking to have a shot. Shot! Goal! Siobhan McGrath, just if you felt if she got half a yard in the Vina Tobin, it spelt danger, and it did. Yeah, and look, really, really super play from an inside forward, got out in front of the back. Davina Tobin just committed, maybe came out a little bit sharp with the hand and left McGrath slip inside her. And once you let it forward, the calibre of Siobhan McGrath inside you, you know you're always looking at taking it out of the neck from there. Siobhan McGrath, who got 1-2 against Clare, has got a goal here today so far, and it's a good response from them. They now lead in this game by 1-6 to 9 points, and it's exactly what Colin Murray would have liked. The whole Galway management here jumped from the ground when they saw that ball hit the back of net. A fine goal sent a high beyond Emma Kavanagh, and Galway maybe have just come out with a pep in their step now at the start of the second half, even though they're down to 14. Aoife Dunhu playing the ball inside. Ailish O'Reilly reveling in this space now, settling on it. Top of the D, looking to send it towards that left hand upright, over the bar, and Galway really have a zest in their pep there, aren't they? Yeah, and they're really just starting to dictate things around around the field you could hear if I don't know call for that ball to come in low to her there from the clearance from her half back line you know aware that she was beaten in the air by Kellyanne Doyle on the ball before that but the interplay between herself and Ailish O'Reilly in that half forward line now they really are starting to create things for Galway. Goal and a point in a minute there for Galway has turned this game a little bit they've gone from uh, being to three down at half time to lead by two Neve Kilkenny going from distance all of a sudden Galway have just thrown off a little bit of a shackles and uh, asking a few questions now. Yeah, I think they certainly have. They're, they look to be a different Galway team, you know, that came out of the dressing room that second half there. I suppose they're the ones maybe bringing the physicality to, to Kilkenny now, where Kilkenny have been dictating that in the first half. Kilkenny haven't scored in the second half. Galway have hit 1-3 in those opening minutes. Ball over to the far side now. Looking to try and get a touch on it here. Are the Kilkenny forwards and get a moving here with Fisher. Looking to play the ball cross field. Chance might work out now. Miriam Walsh looking to play it forward. Still going as Walsh shortens the grip, has a shot. It's tail to the left and wide, and you'd have to credit the pressure she was under there. Absolutely, even the ball that came back out to her, you know it's not the first option Kilkenny wanted to get. It probably wasn't even the second, but did eventually break to Marion, but she had to work so hard to get the shot off that you know she was always under pressure striking it. So wide for Kilkenny. Second wide of the second half, and as we said, haven't had too many in this game. We only count three overall in the game, and it's all been for Kilkenny. Looking to play it on here now. Higgins giving it off and giving it to Donahue. Donahue to play it down into the corner, but it's uh, cut out and won this time by Davina Tobin. Going to be interesting to see now the battle with her McGrath after uh, smarting, after giving away that goal effectively. Ball played long, late challenge went in. Siobhan McGrath, Colette Dormer. Dormer, as we know, was carrying a bit of an injury in this game, and uh, she's down just a bit gingerly on the ground here at the moment. Aoife Donoghue is going to be spoken to by John Dermody. And, uh, well, 
it has been peppering along there a little bit of tension and niggle off the ball yellow card yeah and I think you could see that one coming you know Dormer had laid the hand pass off a good long hand pass out to Kellyanne Doyle and the challenge for me for Dunn who just came in a little bit late on her and I'm not sure if it was a slap down on, on the affected hand or not but Dormer certainly felt it and a yellow free for Dunn let's back up though she made a stern stuff for the Paul's home woman there's a change going to be made and it looks like Katie Power is coming in and what a change to make in place of uh, Steffi Fitzgerald. Katie had a big part to play in some of the uh, other round games as well and uh, you know has been able to chip in with a few scores. Yeah, she's got her name on the scoreboard every day when she's come on so you know what a super player to have for, for Kilkenny to come off the bench and you know super to see her back after a, a run of really tough injuries. Straight away, she might be in on this, but uh, getting up there, knocking it down. Shauna Healy, Dervin, looking to get away from Katie Nolan. All of a sudden, the Galway defence just getting on top. Loose plasto by Dervin is going to be picked up over on the uh, far side there by Megan Farr. Oh, lovely turn of pace. And looking to slalom my way inside. She must be watching the Olympics. Ball is with Dealey. Dealey looking to play it inside. Caught by Katie Nolan. Nolan turning around and getting away from the attentions of Siobhan Gardner. Offloads it now here to Walsh. Walsh has got a fine score already. Lovely dinky ball across. Might be asking an awful lot, though. Gall looking to turn around the house. Has to tighten it, but well played by Emma star blocking away the attention Galway continue to lead Gall being tracked all the way there by Dervla Higgins ball across the goal though dangerous ball might break trying to get up there and uh, win it Miriam Walsh ball break on underground Katie Nolan loves to come off the back of a scrum though and might be able to get an opportunity ball though breaks for Katie Power she's going to have a shot off referee says it uh, went out off of a uh, Galway player and it's going to be a 45 you can imagine uh, Gall is going to go to take this and something maybe just for Kilkenny to get to grips with again yeah you know they worked really really hard on that one but credit the, the Galway defence pushed Denise Gall out wide now towards the sideline forced her to put the ball back across the goal Marion Welch looked to get a hand up to it and, and nearly had it and the chance eventually broke Aoife Doyle then who, who just put it wide or put it out over the end line off the, the Galway player Just looking at Aoife Doyle though she has strapping above and below her knee I see her stretching out her leg there at the moment it's obviously a knock that she has and uh, they're trying to mind it but uh, she seems to be curtailed by it a little bit Yeah probably a little bit even though that point she scored in the first her two first point half points or two super scores from ball but maybe something that's just hampering her a little bit inside in that full forward line 45 from gold then goes over the bar and we have just coming up on uh, 10 minutes gone here in the second half better say hello to Evan who's watching us at the moment as this ball breaks Dealey wins it ahead of uh, Ailish O'Reilly looking to come out with O'Reilly looks at oh I thought that could have went the other way I thought ne uh, Ailish O'Reilly was fouling her but the referee says that she took too many steps going to be a free in yeah I thought initially Dealey might have got the free and when it didn't come then I didn't think he'd throw for over carrying but Blue Dealey in fairness she had taken Laura Glynn's pocket really really well out of the sky and just couldn't get away from the Galway forwards when she got down so a chance again as I said for Ailish O'Reilly and enough to keep Galway ticking over on the right side of the scoreboard Ailish O'Reilly has put it up and dragged though a little bit on the wing it's gone out to the right and wide that's a missed opportunity in lots of ways with another substitution happening for Kilkenny here yeah it looks to be Laura Murphy I think coming on the Kilkenny side for Michaela Keneally so Laura is going out to, to around the middle of the field and Mary O'Connell back into the, the half hour position yeah so Laura Murphy on uh, didn't really, Michaela you know, had a very strong opening 10 and uh, then just was curtailed a little bit it would seem. Yeah, you know, a big physical player for Kilkenny, a huge hand and, you know, good to catch a ball but probably just didn't get the puck out. Very good win there by Siobhan Gardner, you'd have to say from that long ball up towards uh, Ailey Show, looking to get away from the attentions of uh, Megan Farrell. Steps out to the left and then the right and gives it to Kilkenny. Kilkenny looking to step back inside. One of the greats of uh, Camogie, of course, looking to step away. She's still going, has been met twice and still going, Kilkenny. But eventually it's uh, sent away by Claire Phelan and on the burst here now, Dormer. Looking to get the ball up the field. Looking to track with Eve Hannafy. Looking to step inside. Ball is still going. Looking to play this ball low inside. Miriam Walsh, the ball gets away though and it's going to be picked up by Mullia's Sarah Dervin. Ball cross field now. Going to get to Walsh. Walsh in loads, or uh, Ailish O'Reilly, I should say, in loads of space. Ball flicked away from her though, expertly by Denise Gall, but somehow she's won it back. Looking to step left right now play the ball down into the corner no one was expecting it did all it come to the right side the ball went left and it's going to be an easy opportunity for Kilkenny to clear with Claire Phelan ball up along the wing getting away from Gaul but Katie Walsh looks like she was surely pulled back there by Siobhan Gardner 
and uh, Katie Nolan again had a strong opening quarter probably faded a little bit but uh, looking to try and get back into it here yeah has probably had a, a quieter opening 10 minutes of the second half by her own standards that's, that's probably testament to the amount of ball that Galway have been on and the, the amount of possession they've had and the amount of attacks they've mounted but again just a, a wayward ball from Galway on that occasion allowed Claire Feeling to get back and, and clear that ball and that's something you know they haven't been guilty of up to this point Great image over there of uh, Denise Gall as she comes up to this in John Locke's Park into the dressing room men, knocks the ball up and over the bar. Denise Gall keeping Kilkenny back here in touch and uh, more than in touch, just a one point game now. Yeah, and as I said, that came from the turnover down in the in the Kilkenny full back line. A ball, an aimless ball in that gave Claire Feeling plenty of time to, to launch a clearance and the ball back up. You know, Galway have been really effective at winning their own ball around the half forward line and, and kind of cutting Claire Feeling out up until that point. Gall is uh, half of uh, Kilkenny's scores here. 10 points they have. Galway have uh, won 8. The goal coming from Siobhan McGrath after 35 minutes. And here she is getting on to this ball now. Looking to get away from the attentions of Colette Dormer. Jinkin right and then left. Puts it up good and high. It's tight to that left hand upright. It's coming in though. It's over the bar. Fine score from Siobhan McGrath. Yeah, and it curled in lovely. In fairness, her, she made the run early and got out well ahead of Dormer. And Dormer then just couldn't commit to it. Forced to stand off her and try and stand her up out there. And Siobhan McGrath used the wind perfectly then just to sail it within that left hand side to post. Over on to the far side. Heavy enough breeze coming down uh, off of the town end of the ground here and uh, trying to win that ball over on the far side. Katie Power looking to keep Sean Healy away from it. Looks like Sean Healy's going to be picking up Katie then. The remainder of this game, Katie Power on, also Laura Murphy on. As uh, Galway tried to, maybe from a psychological point of view, right some of the wrongs that they've experienced against Kilkenny in the last two big games that they have as Gaul nonchalantly flicks that ball in, up and over the bar. She did it while the rest of us were just looking around the place. And made so little of that breeze, you know, it's, it's more than a slight breeze out there. It's a strong wind blown into her face, but as you said, nonchalantly just put it down, swung it over the bar from distance without any real, you know, bother to Gaul. Keeps him in touch at 1 9 to 11 points. It was, of course, 8 points to 5 in favour of Kilkenny at the break. The goal, as we said, from McGrath. Fine goal it was. Ball across to the far side of the field, but it's uh, well cut out there by Dervla Higgins and ball is played long. McGrath kicks it on with Ailish O'Reilly that takes it on from Megan Farrell. Ailish O'Reilly holding her off, looking to get inside. Ailish O'Reilly hits the deck. Referee says a free. Ailish O'Reilly, I think confidence player I find with her sometimes she's taking the freeze today and I think she's just got into the flow of the game really taking the game to Kilkenny yeah and she's really flourishing out in the half forward line now when she gets the right ball into her there you know she's taking on the Kilkenny defence and as we said they're getting they were getting rewards in the first half for running at them and drawing fouls and they've continued that you know they're not you know to be tempting with the wind behind you to maybe launch long ball into that full forward line if she was in there but obviously Kilkenny have clear feeling in front for a sweep and if she was out there so Galway opting to go through the half forward line and you know leave Siobhan McGrath inside then to to cover the ground inside there and Aisha Riley as you said is really reveling out in that half forward line at the moment. Aisha Riley then about to take this free as uh, we see Heather Cooney as a mere Ishka going in Keith Dunahu with uh, some refreshment. Azalea Shirely puts that ball over the bar. That brings her tally today to eight points. And we're just heading towards a water break now. And what Westmead official John Dermody plays. 110 to 11. Ball over in the far side. Miriam Walsh now being tracked over there by Emma Hellebert. Pops the pass back here. Opportunity. Sending in a long ball. That is some score if it goes over the bar. Mary O'Connell, I think. Like Mary O'Connell, yeah. Yeah, super score from her. And again, came from the sharp puck out, Emma Cavanagh, to collect the armor out at right corner back. The long ball up, hopped lovely for Mary Walsh inside the Galway defence. And re lovely recycled ball then from Kilkenny. And Mary, who's in fairness, I think, has played in every position in the forwards at this stage, popped up at right half forward to swing that one over the bar and, you know, just bring Kilkenny that little bit closer. Well, credit to Mary, I think she's done that a couple of times in the game. Anyone who's maybe playing in the half-forward line, she's been just off the pocket, waiting for a chance, probably hasn't been spotted up to now. Credit to Miriam, she probably heard the shout. She's been shouting maybe enough, I'd imagine, Mary O'Connell. And a fine score from an impossible angle into that breeze. Yeah, super, super score from her. As you said, she's been getting in those positions all along and maybe the pass just hasn't been hasn't been coming out to her 100%. Or, you know, the Galway players have been getting the little knocks and the little spills on it just to, to take the pass away. But on that occasion, you know, super score from distance. Just see if we can try and catch up on uh, some of the other scores then in the games that are on around the same time here. And uh, it is currently 
Dublin who lead down by eight points to seven with 20 minutes gone in the second half. That is uh, probably an encounter that's uh, getting a little bit close there. Yeah, low scoring, tense affair it would seem to be up there and you know, huge at stake I suppose. Dublin having already contested a relegation final in the league this year won't be anxious to, to get back close to one like that and down having just come up, you know, will be anxious to steer away from those relegation battles themselves and will be looked to cement another year in the senior grade. And just to tell you, the Cork lead, uh, got, uh, Waterford, Waterford uh, got a goal there to, into the second half and it's uh, just about 11 minutes gone in the second half. It is 2.12 to Cork, 3.6 to Waterford. Well, that would be a bit of a turn if Waterford were to come out with there with the uh, victory. Although, as we know, and he said it before, Poddy doesn't mind quarterfinals. <laughs> no, he'd like to go that route here another day out for them all. But uh, not a huge win for Waterford, a huge performance from them. You know, spoke about Dublin being involved in a relegation final in the league. Obviously, Waterford were the team that were relegated, but what a way they've turned their championship around. So, 110 to 12 at the water break, and it's Megan Farrell that's leading from the front end. The Thomastown player looking to charge forward. The captain as well. Ball is uh, knocked away from Miriam Walsh and is picked up by Katie Nolan. Katie Nolan, of course, at the famed St. Martin's Club in Muckalee. Giving it to uh, Gaul. Gaul on a goal. So, Farrell, who lost the ball forward, though, and it's a uh, chance now for Starr to push forward. Giving it off Tifa Dunne, who being tracked there by Mary O'Connell. Gets up and loses it. O'Connell all over it, looking to get the ball there. Higgins looking to get in on it as well. And Rhys Starr in there to touch it on. Neve Kilkenny moving forward. Settling on the ball as uh, Megan Farrell dropped her hurl. Ball is knocked in, but it's going to be guided out over the end line by Emma Kavna. And it's Galway's first wide, would you believe? Yeah, you know, and there's been a couple of lovely little dispossessions, hooks and, and blocks all over the field. And, you know, I think the pace of the game has probably really stepped up this week, maybe from no offence to the teams that these two teams have played earlier. But this is probably a real championship battle today. And, you know, just a couple of spilled little balls and a couple of little missed time tackles, maybe just... Second wide, I should say. Of course, Hayley Shirelli did have a long range free that went wide. Ball is broken out. Still tight, tense affair. 12 points for Kilkenny. 1-10 for... Galway, Kilkenny have grown into the game though in the last maybe seven or eight minutes because uh, Miriam Walsh looks like she's pulled up with an injury there as uh, Sarah Healy comes forward, popping the pass now. Looks like Galway have a spare player if you would think it, but they're down to 14, but Sarah Spellman was in space there. Lovely run by Sarah Healy, got involved in that. Spellman just drifted off, wasn't picked up. Lovely score. Yeah, and probably a testament to the work that she's gotten through today. You know, she's made a lot of hard runs that Kilkenny defence and has been laying off the ball and has been fouled on a couple of occasions. So, you know, just I suppose the she gets on the scoreboard. Miriam Walsh, uh, just keeping an eye on her at the moment, looks like she's just, uh, well, feeling a bit of pull on her quad at the moment, but uh, she's still out there anyway. No calls to the sideline. Made a tough stuff in Tullerone, of course, as this ball won by Hellebert. Looking to step up by the aforementioned Walsh. Giving the ball on here now and trying to drive out there was uh, Derville Higgins. Higgins muscled into that. Tommy Shefflin isn't overly happy with John Dermody either, is praying Dowling. But uh, I saw a clear pull of the short. I don't think they should be remonstrating too much. Maybe they felt she fouled the ball before that. No, I think it was just huge pressure from Mary O'Connell. I think she came in on this side and maybe just gave a slight pull of the jersey back as Galway were trying to advance. So I don't think they're getting to have too many issues with that particular free. Cahan Murray and Tommy Shifflin have a little bit of a ding dong on the sideline as this ball is won by Kellyanne Doyle over on the far side. It's all getting tight. Who said this game doesn't matter? I thought this game meant nothing. Just a run out on a Saturday evening, that's all it was about. Where else to would be. you be? But John Locks and Callan as uh, the Cats come charging again with Miriam Walsh. Katie Powers inside her. Ball is blocked down. Walsh has a second chance. Popping it across here to Gaul. Ball breaks across though. Mary O'Connell. Ball breaks down though. And it's Sean Healy going to drive out with it here now. Getting tight and tense it is here as this ball driving forward. Galway, of course, don't want to lose three in a row against the Cats. Delivered long here now. Going to be tracked all the way though. The opportunity for Neve Hanafy, who's now inside. It looks like in the full forward line, ball breaks, it's uh, down to win it there, Dormer looking to be helped out there by uh, Neve Dealey, Dormer wins it somehow though, the Barrow Rangers player looking to come out, referee says she was being held up, Kelly Dormer, oh she used all her guile to win that didn't she? Yeah absolutely, you know did really really well to get down, that was a real dirty ball, loads of feet and hurls in there, did really well to come out with it and the minute she got in her hand, the hand went up to show her if I have the ball and I'm only going to be fouled or pulled down to get out of here. Player, you know well, I would imagine, Elaine, over the years, as this ball played by uh, Claire Feeling across the far side with uh, Aoife Dunahu, who I have to say has covered a fair blade of grass out there as well today, hasn't Absolutely, she? Absolutely, from defence right the way up to attack, you know, she's been all over the field for Galway, and, you know, being the player down, they certainly need players like that and players of that energy. 
No offence to John Locke's GA grounds, but this game is befitting of, uh, I'd imagine, the Hollow Turf of Crow Park because it's a right tense championship encounter. But it's a fine pitch here in John Locke's, and they're doing their best to bring the best here of the action. As uh, Mary O'Connell tried to win that ball, but it's uh, turned over in Noreen Cohn getting in there and winning it. Bro a break of the hurl there, Emma Hellebert. Ball over to the far side, but it's uh, well read by Tobin, and she's over on the far side and trying to come up along the wing, being tracked all the way there by Neve Hanafy. Gets away from Noreen Cohen, she's still going, looking to flick inside. Ball could went to ground and it's turned over, and it's Aoife Donahue again gets in there, turnover, and I just feel it was a great run by Davina, but it's a really then a turnover, it's a cough up a position when it could have been worked a little bit more intelligently. Yeah, cough up a position, and as a cornerback, you're out of position then, so you have to turn and get back down to defend it. So, you know, Kilkenny maybe just taking a little bit too much out of the ball on, on these occasions, and similarly, Merriam had a a chance there a few minutes ago Katie had made a run into the right hand corner Mary maybe just half took her eye off to watch Katie Galway got the numbers back to get the block and, and ultimately turned that one over again so huge turnovers from both sets of defenders and, and forwards find it really really hard to get a shot away So at the water break it was 1-10 to 12 it's 1-11 to 12 at the moment in favour of Galway it was 8 points to Kilkenny 5 to Galway at half time the goal by Siobhan McGrath turned things around they got a 1-1 in the space of uh, a minute and then chipped in with scores either side of that and don't forget Galway are down to 14 players because Catherine Infinity was sent off after 16 minutes for an off the ball incident with Claire Phelan looks like we have uh, Neve McGrath now gone in and Orla McGrath, I think, as well, has gone in as well. I think I saw the two of them side by side there waiting to get in. So, yeah, a bit of a change out from uh, Galway. And it looks like Neve Hanafi is it coming off. Yeah, just waiting on Hanafi to message to get in there. Not a bad player to bring in either, is it? No, two, two McGrath sisters come in to join uh, Orla inside in that full forward line or in around the forwards there. So, you know, fresh legs at this stage of the game and Orla on the ball straight away. No question about it. Good to see Orla McGrath back in. And she puts the ball over the bar and uh, we know in recent weeks she's been suffering with a shoulder injury, of course, but uh, I suppose if you can release her from the bench and she's had to chip over a score like that, maybe she's worth having in, in reserve. Yeah, they did say in Galway last weekend that she was close to coming back and I suppose they didn't really know if or when they would need her, but I suppose when you're against Kilkenny in the last round of the championship, you need to get game time into her and she's a player that's capable of, I saw there, just popping up with a score or two, so huge player for Galway and a huge player to be able to bring in. All three McGrath sisters on the field, then Neve McGrath on for Neve Hanafy and uh, Orla McGrath in and straight away she put the ball over the bar. Her sister Siobhan getting a goal and a point and Kilkenny now introducing Michelle Tien and all of a sudden it has a little bit of an All-Ireland feel about the sides, doesn't it? Yeah, I think both sets of management team and both sets of bench maybe feel that this one is there for the winning and you know I don't think any of them want to leave here today without winning it so throwing everything they can at it. Well, straight away, Michelle Teen went in and down to Siobhan McGrath and just had a little bit of a shoulder. Uh, just let her know she's there. As Denise Gall puts uh, this free, would you believe, inexplicably to the left and wide. And it remains 1-12 to 12 as that puck out doesn't go particularly well. And it's sent back in by Aoife Doyle, up and over the bar. And Denise Gall, well, you can forget about the free you just missed. Yeah, that's certainly a response, you know, and Galway will be kicking themselves that, you know, they got let off there with Denise Gall missing that free. And then I think the option was probably to poke that ball down as far as you could and go on the attack again. But instead, the short one out to Sean Healy turned over and Aoife Doyle with a super score. Oh, great, great score by Aoife Doyle, you'd have to say. Well alert, Sean Healy just had maybe just turned her head slightly. Wasn't expecting the ball from Laura Glynn. And uh, it makes it 1-12 to 13. A cracking encounter between these two. We call them titans at this stage, would we? As this ball breaks up on the far side. That looked like a foul there by Miriam Walsh. And uh, credit Siobhan Gardner getting in there and winning that ball. And she gets a, a nod there of approval from Sarah Durvin. Yeah, you know, the ball had broke between herself and Katie Nolan. And I think Mary Wells just came in there, maybe blindsided the two of them. And, and Galway free out now and a let off for them. So as we said, the scores have been plentiful in lots of ways at 112 to 13. Not too many wide, so this has been a right encounter. Great game, clear feeling, winning the ball. Bit of a loose pass for Megan Farrell. She won't thank her for that one as a ball by Spellman tried to win it. But it uh, looks like... It was a foul committed there on Megan Farrell, but John Dermody allowed the play to continue. 
thought it was a bit of a trip with the hurley there, but uh, Farrell is in to win that ball anyway and uh, resume playing, giving it on here now to Walsh. But uh, Aoife Dunhu in there, it looked like Megan Farrell went over the top of the ball there to try and get that ball back, but it's Laura Murphy, time to spin now and turn it over to this side of the field, looking for a bit of a run here with Aoife Doyle all of a sudden. Doyle. Maybe got her second win now, I have to feel. Yeah, they didn't look to have any sign of any slowdown or any injury pulling her back there. She made fast ground to get back on Sean O'Healy in a super battle in there. A bit of pressure, I think, there from uh, some of the Kilkenny backroom team for John Dermody. I think the foul on the ball was with Sean O'Healy. It wasn't fouled by Anne-Marie Starr. He let Sean O'Healy away and then called Anne-Marie Starr for fouling the ball. But anyway, I think it might have been some of the the calling he got from the sideline. And uh, it's going to be a free in for Denise Gall. Chance to narrow this gap to just a point. Dangerous ball! <laughs> Laura Glynn just had to be careful there. Yeah, and I think Denise is just trying to keep it as low, maybe just realising that the last one maybe just didn't go her way and just making sure that that one did get on target and just glided over the bar. But credit to Laura Glynn, she did have to be on, on her toes in there on that occasion. We see Denise Gall do that in a league game. <laughs> she's well capable of it, and we saw, I suppose, with the very first free she got up there, what she's capable of doing. This game is getting tight and tense here. The crowd getting right behind it. We have a fine crowd in John Locks and Callan, both in the stand and on the terrace, as you can see them on the far side and up beside the stand here. Cracking encounter. Good crowd have come out to support uh, the Kilkenny Camogie team here because this game is again in the mix and Elaine. It's fallen a little bit like the league final, you know, where Galway got back in contention and all of a sudden, you know, Kilkenny rattled off three scores in a row without the gap with the cup. They're a point down, but you wouldn't bet against them levelling it up here. Call oh, knocking this ball long. In it goes, breaking down off Miriam Walsh. Getting in there, Aoife Doyle. Wouldn't she love to get it? She's three points for her name already. Mary O'Connell is in there, trying to dig it out. Noreen Cohn with uh, Aoife Donoghue in there. Looking to get in there as well. It looks like... Uh, Siobhan Gardner, referee, says uh, there's too much messing going on. And uh, the Galway defence have worked very, very hard there today, of course, with the team being down to 14. Yeah, it's hard to believe that Galway have played the vast majority of this game with 14. You know, at times they look to be the player, the team that have the extra player. And, you know, they've certainly upped their game in this second half. And, you know, they've really pushed Kilkenny and, you know, just the lead for it. But look, there's never anything between these teams when they play. And, and it, as you said, it's very similar to the league final. And it's going to come right down to the wire. She's probably not a player highlighted enough in Galway, but Derville Higgins has had a fine game. Yeah, absolutely. And I thought she carried that forward last week and she really stood up for me last weekend I thought she had a standout performance up in Athen Roy and she's carried that on today a real fiery player driving towards the ball every time and you know came out with that real crucial one there and won her free Megan Farrell trying to win it we'll have to get you start thinking about your player of the match because but uh, this game could go either way a couple of standout players on uh, both sides we are heading on towards uh, 20 past 6 I don't know whether they'll be able to hold up that game between Mullinavat and Dainsford for you, would they? <laughs> we'll have a quick word there now if anyone were watching. They might just hold the warm up. <laughs> <laughs> so just to let you know, Elaine uh, heading for a league game later on. Half seven throw in, so just if you if you see uh, smoke coming out of the tyres uh, <laughs> as she's leaving here, <laughs> understand. And maybe as she wheels into Mullinavat as well. They might the just ball. reserve the parking space inside the gate for me there when I land. <laughs> ball breaks out. Neve Kilkenny try to get on this as Kilkenny look to chase the uh, lead that Galway have. It's a single point, 112 to 14. Next score will, well, could be a big one. Kilkenny settles on this, driving it in, right side, tight to that left hand upright. Her sister Orla on the sideline felt that was a bit tight there, but it was wide and a missed opportunity. Ball delivered long now towards Katie Nolan. She could be a game changer and a game winner. Playing this ball in first time didn't really look. Chance gonna kind of begging and Laura Glynn has time to play it over here. Neve McGrath looking to pop this ball on. Wins the ball, trying to find her sister Siobhan. Being tracked here now by uh, Colette Dormer. Ball is over down on the far side. Trying to be one foul committed there by Siobhan McGrath. Chance to get a relieving free here for Kilkenny. Yeah, silly free really for Galway to give away. You know, Michelle Tien facing her own goal and Siobhan McGrath really only had to stand her up there and maybe force her to try and play the ball out around her but gave the free away instead and give Kilkenny another chance maybe to launch an attack. Should have said Michelle Tien there was uh, the one that was fouled by Siobhan McGrath. Ball out here uh, to the middle where it's won by Denise Gall off her hand but the referee says it's uh, a sideline ball. Denise Gall, it did come off her hand. 
Cahill Murray saying to John Dermody overly happy with uh, maybe something that went on there but uh, it's all a bit handbags now at this stage and it's a sideline ball for Galway 112 to 14 points right in the mix here now we're just crashing into the 30th minute and there we are we're in additional time now whatever John Dermody is going to play 112 Galway 14 points Kilkenny Aoife Dunahu doesn't get a great cut in it, but it makes its way to Ailish O'Reilly, who's been a standout player for Galway this afternoon with eight points to her name. Looking to slalom inside. Two minutes to be played. So we've uh, a few seconds of the, that gone already. Ball by O'Reilly. Inside it goes. Spellman looking to give this ball on. Neve McGrath has an opportunity to win this game for Galway. Taken away from her, though, by the uh, efforts of Megan Farrell. Lovely bit of defensive play there. Yeah, super, and it's been the hook and the, that Kilkenny have done all day. You know, they've got a couple of really, really good hooks in, really important hooks, and that none more so than that last one. Dervila Higgins was shepherded there a little bit by Denise Gall. She brought the ball out over the line, fighting for that, and everywhere is Katie Power. I'm sure both managers won't be too despondent if it's a draw, but uh, you don't want to lose here, I don't think, either, either of them. No, and I think a draw would see Galway go through on score and difference. They have a superior score and difference to Kilkenny, so Galway probably aware of that. But I think at this moment in time, they're both going for the win. Don't know what part of the body that came off of Kellyanne Doyle, but the uh, ball breaks and it's won by the number 12, Aoife Dunn, who been a star player for Galway this afternoon, been tracked by uh, Grace Walsh there, hits the deck, free in. And the Galway management are happy with that because with 50 seconds remaining, this could be... The end of the game here. Yeah, it could certainly be the insurance point for them. What a run from Aoife Dunne, who again, as he said, has covered every blade of grass out there today and just so quick on those breaks, saw the opportunity and took on the Kilkenny defence. And as we said early in that first half, you know, when they run at that Kilkenny defence, they are asking questions and they are drawing fouls. I'm thinking about player of the match in a minute, but I'm just thinking of a few players, the likes of Dervla, Higgins, Aoife Donoghue, Siobhan McGrath, Ailey Shirelli, Siobhan Gardner on the Galway side. Absolutely, yeah, and the ever-reliable Neve Kilkenny as well, you know, popped up uh, all over the field on occasions there for Kilkenny, I suppose. Megan Farrell was outstanding in defence, Claire Phelan played well in patches back there as the spare player, you know, and credit to Galway, they've kind of played her out of the game in, in the la in, for much of that second half there as well, and up front, like Denise Gall has been, bar that one blip on the free take, and, you know, has been ever-dependable from freeze and play, and Katie Nolan started really well, but, you know, Galway seemed to have got to grips with her in that second half, but I suppose ultimately for me today, Aoife who was probably the standout player on display out there you know popped up in her own defense popped up forwards and still in the 60th minute is still driving forward and won that free so an outstanding performance from her today for Galway. Shirelli's had a fine game as well her ninth point uh, eight, eight of them have come from place ball 62 minutes and 40 seconds John Dermody giving Kilkenny a chance but Neve McGrath has returned it with a bit of purpose ball is inside who's going to be able to get the chance nobody because there's no one in there and the chance is going to be cleared by Emma Kavna looking to step across field she gives it over here to Michelle Teen got to get this ball moving John Dermody looks like he's going to give Kilkenny a chance to get it forward going to be sent long uh, by um Colette Dormer, long inside towards Katie Nolan, uh, Miriam Walsh trying to help her out, Nolan looking to step inside, looks like she's held up, Galway looking to hold her off now, ball is across field, dangerous ball it is, Aoife Doyle looking to pop the pass here now, coming inside, Katie Nolan being held up by Shauna Healy, one last chance for the Cats, chance for Doyle, saved, ball is taken away, Nolan, ball is on the ground, Walsh, ball is taken away, thou shall not pass says Galway ball is going to be cleared out here now Aoife Dunhu trying to give it on here now to Anne-Marie Starr three blocks on the line by that Galway defence that was something else John Dermody continues to play ball is on the ground no foul right in front of Tommy Shefflin not overly happy with John Dermody played on here it is now by Aoife Dunhu loose ball going to be sent in by Dormer dangerous ball trying to get up there and win at Durban ball breaks away inside his goal going to have a shot away Shauna Healy was in there was it Ailey O'Reilly? I think it was O'Reilly of all people that got in to disrupt the East goal it's out for a 45 says the uh, umpire goal looks like she's gone into cramp it's unbelievable. What a 30 seconds of play, I suppose, over and back across. The save from Laura Glynn is huge credit. Point blank save from her. Got the ball out. Katie Nolan and Marion Welch just couldn't get a hand or a foot or anything to, to knock it into that goal there. It looked like all they had to do was just to blow it over the line, but credit the Galway defence. And as you said, Ailey O'Reilly popped up at the end of that one to deny Denise Gall. And did Durvin falling on the ground get a swing of the hurl away to get that ball away on the ground as well? That's just phenomenal play by the Galway defence there with Laura Glynn 
with a cracking save. Absolutely cracking save and you know Kilkenny looked to have worked the ball really really well across and worked it into a really really good position but what a save from Laura Glenn certainly kept that one out. Here we go then, last chance, Claire feeling what's she going to do is she has to pop it in, little punt pass out, in it goes, it needs a big hand, knocked away by a Galway hurl, back to feeling it goes, second time of asking, go and have a fly shot at it, puts it in and over the bar, that should be it though. Claire feeling with that score, it probably just had a little bit too much purpose on it. Yeah, I think she knew herself from the minute it left the hurl that it was dipping over the bar rather than under it and... Think He's that calling looks for right. the ball. I think John Dermody of Galway got the victory here. They've come to Kilkenny. They've laid a bit of hoodoo. Pat on the back there, Cahill Murray and Brian Dowling. But I'm sure Brian Dowling will be saying, see you in a few weeks, pal. Yeah, look, I think both of them were playing it down a little bit beforehand, maybe saying that they were looking for a performance. But certainly when that game was in the melting pot there and it was there to be won, there was no backing down and there was neither of them backing off it, either on the field or on the sideline. So a massive game. But look, I think it'll do both sets of players huge, huge for their confidence and, and just to get that kind of a, a challenge and that kind of a game before um, knockout Camogie in a, in a couple of weeks time and look Galway will top the group but there's no betting that they won't these two teams won't meet again before the year is finished you'd have to say though Kilkenny went right to the wire with them all the way it just goes to show you the grit and everything uh, that they have um, you know the problem might be if Brian Dowling is looking at it that quarter after the half time break where they just allowed Galway to get you know a spin of 1-3 and it changed the game ultimately yeah and it's a funny one because for times there today it certainly lo didn't look like Kilkenny were the ones with the extra player you know it was Galway that were really dictating everything but credit their game plan they were really really intelligent with their ball and they played no long ball in over that half forward and half back line they played Played everything through Ailish O'Reilly and Aoife O'Donoghue on the half forward line here and really took Claire Phelan and the spare player in that Kilkenny full back line out of the game. You know the Kilkenny full back line had dominated for a lot of that first half and Galway just didn't play the ball in there unless it was a real 70-30 ball unless they were guaranteed to win it inside and when they did Siobhan McGrath got in there for her goal and you know they really managed the game well from there. Galway you know the the one chance, the ball, it was an intelligent ball in for that McGrath goal. Davina was probably just a little bit, how would you put it, probably anxious to get there and McGrath just was able to spin off her. Yeah, it's, you know, probably a, a stick or twist for a corner back. You know, do you go in front and do you try and win the ball or do you chance letting the corner forward win it and taking you on? And on that occasion, Davina probably just overstretched the small but didn't quite get the snap on it when she put her hand to it and it broke inside and look at forward at the calibre of Siobhan McGrath only needs one chance and that's what she got and, you know, a super goal and it really set Galway on their way. Galway on their way again for Kilkenny. You know, Brian... They're peppering along. They haven't been fantastic. They've been in right games and right battles. They're showing a lot of grit and determination, but I would imagine he'd like them to be winning games easier in some ways if they were to win ultimately. They didn't win here today, but you know what I mean? That they, They're just getting involved in too many battles in some ways. Yeah, and today was probably a much better performance than they've put in to date. And, you know, that to credit them, they've been able to do that throughout the year. They've been able to up their game when it comes to the likes of the, the Galways and the Corks and whatever. But I suppose ultimately, say when they look back and, and realise that they played most of that game with an extra player, and you know they just really didn't make it count, especially in that second half. You know, once Galway got to grips with it, Kilkenny just never really made that player that extra player count, and it wasn't really until they brought Michelle Tien on, maybe pushed Colette Dormer out into the half back line, that Megan Farrell maybe started to push up the field a bit, coming towards the end there, and they started to create a little more than they had for most of that second half. Yeah, and looking at things then with uh, regards to uh, Galway, you know, b big game losses to Kilkenny. Uh, this was important ultimately to just give them some element of a foothold. I know Carl said before the game he wanted a performance. I'm sure he's happy enough now to be coming out with Callum with a win. Yeah, you get a performance and you get a win on top of it. It's a real bonus, isn't it? But look, I think it's a lot easier road to be heading back to Galway now with the victory than it is if you had been beaten here today, especially in that epic game. But look, I don't think they'll get too carried away. It's not so many years ago they came down here, you know, in a, a group game similar, I think it was to Freshford. And, you know, they beat Kilkenny on that occasion. And ultimately, Kilkenny went on to win the All-Ireland. So, you know, at the end of the day, they will know that it is only a group game and they still will have bigger challenges ahead. But I do think it's nice to, to get that kind of a performance with 14 players and to get the win then really tops it off. 
Yeah, so Galway topping uh, the table with the uh, victory and the uh, scoring difference of plus 24. They've hit 641 now, which is a, a fair scoring, there's no doubt about it. We're going to have a look at some of the other scores and bring you uh, the tables as well as best we can here before uh, we sign off. So don't go away. We will have reaction from both camps. I don't have any doubt that Colin Murray will speak to us uh, today after that win here uh, in uh, Kilkenny. It could be an easy job for our men here in the background to be able to grab him anyway. Uh, we'll also hear from our player of the match that we've nominated as uh, Aoife Dunhu and pick up from Brian Dowling as well. So we're just going to take a brief break here as we head down pitch side. Do stay with us. Right, we're live back here at John Locke's GA ground here in Callan Galway, victorious by 113 to 15. And the voice and face that you see in front of us is uh, Aoife Dunna, Dunahoo. Uh, Aoife, you know, Kilkenny and yourselves have gone to the wire in the last uh, few big matches. Glad to get a win against them finally. Yeah, I'm um, uh, delighted there near the end. Like, it was a fair battle between uh, the two teams. And look, I think, you know, we really bring out the the best in one another and look you want to be playing the the top team so look it'll bring the two teams forward going going along now into the um knockout stages of the championship so um yeah i'd imagine though you're as you're you're trying to allude there you're not getting carried away with this it's uh you know it's just uh, means to an end you're moving on now into the into the group stages although of course you could still be in quarter final <coughs> action depending on draw but again you know keeping things trucking along yeah absolutely look uh, it's still in the group stages and look I was about coming down here and uh, I suppose getting a performance as, an, as a team and I suppose you're, you're building from here and you're looking to improve on every game and um, yeah look we could still end up in a quarter final and sure look we all want to be playing games so I suppose um, we'll wait now until tomorrow and see what draw we get and um, then look forward to either a quarter final or a semi final against whoever it may be. Aoife, recent weeks you've been hit by injuries then into this game, uh, of course, the encounter with Kilkenny, you find yourselves down to 15, uh, down to 14 after about 15 minutes. You know, you, you really had to go to the well a little bit today, didn't you? Yeah, look, we've picked up, I suppose, a lot of injuries along the way. And look, it just opens up, I suppose, opportunities for, for other players to come in and, you know, nail down a place on their team. And um, we're lucky enough that we have a really strong panel. And yeah, going down to 14, like... 
I, we were like we were all absolutely out on our feet. And just credit to all the girls. Um, you know, Kilkenny had an extra player for, geez, I'd say it was only five minutes maybe into the first half. So, look, a uh, great character shown by the team. And I suppose what would be most, um, I suppose, promising from it would be the work rate um, of everyone around the pitch being down to 14 players. But, yeah, it was unfortunate for Catherine because she's been flying it. So, I'm sure she'll be fairly disappointed. But um, we'll, we'll look at it and hopefully... You know, maybe she'd be back with us for the next day. So. In, in a way, though, I, I'm just thinking about when it happened. It just mm. happened before the water break. Probably allowed you to get maybe heads together quickly and, and work out mm -hmm. the scenario of where you were to go forward. Because I, I thought you played very well in the immediate uh, time up to up to half time. I know Kilkenny went in with a three point lead, but mm -hmm. you didn't really let it affect you too much. I don't think. No, I th like I think the way team set up nowadays. You know, most teams will always have maybe a, a sweeper there and. You'd be always the teams that you do come up to play that you'd be always looking to play around it. So look, we're probably well used to playing with an extra, I suppose, defender at the back. But it was, I suppose, about you know just being smarter on the ball and trying to work the ball uh, down through the lines and obviously not playing it down on top of um, the sweeper. And then I suppose trying to turn over the ball then as best as we could. And you know we just had to work really, really hard to win any ball that went into the forward line. And you know the message going in was to the two girls inside was to make it stick. And you know fair play to them. You know they really, I think worked really hard to hold on to the ball once it went in. And um, we got a, a lot of scores off their work rate and the turnovers um, in there. Yeah. Well, Aoife, you're our player of the match for today. Congratulations. Uh, a win is a win. You're on the road, and it'll shorten the trip home, I'd imagine. Yeah, it was a nice spin down to to Callan, uh, so we'll have I'll probably be late enough when we get home, but um, we might stop somewhere on the way home. We'll see. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Supermax might be uh, getting a call as well. Thanks indeed, Aoife, Thanks. Thanks for uh, joining us and congratulations. Thank you, Aoife Thank Donoghue, you. giving us her uh, viewpoint in on the encounter uh, here today. She picking up uh, the uh, victory and uh, matters going well uh, from uh, a, a Galway point of view with that win by 113 to uh, 15 points. So we're just waiting uh, to hear from uh, both managements and uh, I do know that Cahill Murray is busy at the moment with some uh, local media so just for the moment we'll uh, hand it back uh, to the lads above and uh, rejoin us when we hear from both managements.
Okay, we're back here to Callan and the face you see on camera is, I'd imagine, a happy man, Cahill Murray. Fine, you know, had to go to the well here today at Cahill and uh, I'm sure you're happy to come out even if it is a one-point win. Yeah, look at really happy in fairness. Um, I suppose when you get down to 14 players, it's always, you know, hard. But um, look, we did really well. We, I suppose, a really good reaction from the sending off. Um, you know, at halftime, we're down three points. The third quarter was huge for us, you know. We turned it down, you know, ended up with the water break one point up, you know, it was really, really good. And mm. uh, once Siobhan got the goal in, you know, we really drove on from there. Um, players showed you his character, huge heart, and um, we're really, really proud of them, you know, to be honest with you. I mentioned to Aoife that maybe the sending off, if there's ever a right time for it to happen, it happened just before the water break, it probably allowed you to reset a little bit. Would that be fair enough? Yeah, look, I suppose we could we could take a second there to reset and just, well, like, look at the girls and all themselves, there's only one way to set up after you play. You know, you have to play a two-player full forward and have to try and get the ball into them. But, you know, it was very important that we worked incredibly hard in the forwards, which we did. Um, you know, we had to protect the ball a bit better as well, and we had to take our scores. You know, I thought yeah. the second half performance really, really good, but at the end of the day, it doesn't mean anything really. You know, it, look, you might get a bit of luck with the draw, you might be straight through to the semi-final, but other than that, it's, you know, it doesn't really mean a bit. No point doing it today unless you're going to follow it up later on in the year. Yeah, the breeze, I don't know how much of a factor it was. You know, Ailish was uh, hitting some fine scores on the free taking duty today. You go in just three points down. You come out at the start of the second half and you seem to, whatever it was about, whatever happened at half time, but you seem to be just hitting the top of the ground. There was a nice flow for the next 10 minutes. You definitely were well on top. Oh yeah, look at the girls here themselves and there's a really, really strong breeze here and you wouldn't think it when you're watching the game, yeah. but there is a really, really strong breeze and look at, you know, in the first half, we probably had to carry the ball in a bit closer to the goal mm -hmm. to get the shots off. Or in the second half, we were able to take them shots and farther out. And, you know, Nathan Keeney and Ailish got some super points, long range points, in fairness. And look, it's, the curves played really well. It's a, it's a really good performance. But again, at the end of the day, it doesn't mean anything unless we follow it up. That's, that's a, again, and you've alluded to that now twice, Carl, and getting there with regards to that. You know, you've won nothing ultimately, but it's a good test of resolve and character again and grit of this team and you know maybe just getting one at least on Kilkenny because you know there's a good chance if things keep going your way you're going to meet them again. Oh well, certainly Kilkenny are going to be in the shake-up later on the year you know they're Ireland champions and the league champions for a reason but um, look at in the Ireland in the league there was only a puck of ball between us so we know we're up there or thereabouts but um, you know you're going to have to play as well as that in a, in a, in a semi-final or final and, and, and better than that again you know but it's we're really happy where we are we've worked really hard since the league and um, we have a few new other players to come back into it now in the next few weeks, so we're open for that. But look at happy where we are, but an awful lot of work to do to, to get to where we want to be. Well, it shortens the trip home, Carl. Thanks indeed, and well done. Thanks, Ian. Cheers. Carl Murray there giving us his views on the game. I have Brian Dowling just off to the left hand side here. We'll get Brian to uh, just come across and, uh, and give us his uh, views. Thanks indeed, Brian, for coming back out to us. Brian, you're, pr you're probably smarting a little bit from that, you know, you, you don't lose too many games in recent times. No, look, it's very disappointing, I suppose, losing at home as well, it's, it's not easy and uh, I suppose we could nearly sn snuck it at the end with a goal, you know, great save from the goal of the keeper in fairness and maybe I thought we might get the rebound in, but look, it wasn't to be, I suppose we wouldn't have deserved it, to be honest, um, God, we were the better team today, um, you know, I thought we started well and, you know, we were a bit of fire in us, but then the sending off probably turned things in our favour nearly, you know. Um, very disappointed after that, the extra player. Probably looked like Galway had the extra player for a long time. So, look, disappointing, but, you know, I said to the girls there, we're still in the championship, so just have to get on with it now and get back to training during the week. Yeah, well, as Cahill said, he's won nothing, uh, ultimately, other than the game here. You've, you've lost nothing other than the game here. Yeah, look, I said, you know, we can either learn from it now or, you know, we just have to move on from it, you know, there's no point, um, you know, getting get, you know getting too worked up about it, I suppose. But look, we wanted to win, to get, win today, there's no doubt about that, you know, um, just very disappointed the second half, even where, you know, we found the scores very, very hard to come by, you know, I suppose Galway got a lot of scores there from freezing the first half, kept them in the game, you know, but we just couldn't get that goal and I suppose Siobhan McGrath's goal, you know, well-taken goal was probably the difference, you know, the Galway had something to hold on to from there on in, so, look, we're very disappointed, but, you know, as I said, we just have to get on with it now and get ourselves right for a quarter-final, because going, that's going to be a huge battle. Again, opportunity, uh, Brian, to, you know, get a few players, a bit of game time as well, you know, Katie getting, you know, in, in, in a tighter, tougher game, I suppose, you know, there's no harm in that they have a little bit of mileage now in the legs in, in, in a big game, ultimately. Yeah, look, I suppose Katie's after getting three, 20, 25 minutes in the last couple of weeks, so, look, you know, hopefully yeah, she'll get a good run of training now in the next two or three weeks and she'll be ready to go for the championship and look again the girls know the place is up for grabs now for sure and it's up to them to perform and train and see who wants that jersey um, in start on 22nd of August Well Brian thanks indeed for coming back out still in the championship of course and a lot still to play for Yeah thanks lads Thanks yeah. indeed Brian Dowling giving us his views on the uh, game here Elaine I know you have a big game coming up so we won't detain you uh, too long 
Uh, just in the middle of my band work there when you start <laughs> and the dance for a crowd are probably be hoping you don't make it um, but looking at, looking at it um, you know this was a right game a little bit of a cauldron here in Callan it was getting tight and tough in the in the crowd as well as uh, out on the field a right game yeah it was a real championship match like there was something you know I know we always said beforehand there's nothing really at stake there was something at stake there both teams wanted to win it you could feel it from the players you could feel it on the sideline you could certainly feel it in the stand there was a real championship feel to it and it was a super game it was a really really close game you know scores weren't maybe as plentiful as we've seen in other championship games but when they were got they were good scores they were hard won and it just shows, showed the immense time the ball was in possession the contests all over the field there was huge battles and huge performances from different players all over the field yeah despite the wind and the condition you know and, and both managers have alluded to that it was a strong enough breeze the ball you know it didn't it didn't go way too often you know there, there, there was a very good economy of play I know it spent a little bit of time out over the line especially in the first half over our side but you know the, the, the shot selection you'd have to credit both sides yeah two really clever teams and really good use of the ball from both sides and I think maybe today Galway's use of the ball was probably a little bit cleverer at Kilkenny than Kilkenny, Kilkenny's when it counted Aoife Dunn who alluded to it there you know she said they had to work around the spare player at the back and they did that so well in that second half you know Ailish O'Reilly had a stormer around the middle of the field kind of she was the one that popped up back in her own full back line near the end there and Aoife Dunn who and herself really drifted from that half forward line and carried the ball then and they didn't have to shoot aimless ball up to that Kilkenny full back line where the spare player was. There seemed to be though a little bit of grit in Galway that Kilkenny weren't going to get this third victory over them. They were throwing bodies on the line there at the end ultimately. When you saw Ailish O'Reilly back there on a clearance to try and disrupt the nice goal, you saw you know a great save from Laura Glynn but Sarah Durvin, every sinew of her body to make sure the rebound wasn't put in by Katie Nolan. Yeah and I think that's the, the thing that pleased Cahill the most there was the performance and the work rate of his team you know and maybe that's something you know there wasn't a puck of the ball between these two teams in the league final and last year's All-Ireland final but maybe Kilkenny's work rate and that little bit of grit saw Kilkenny over the line on those two encounters and it was Galway's work rate today that, that Cahill was happiest with so I think that signifies maybe what he was hoping to get from the league and ultimately the first couple of championship games was to build a bit of gut and determination into this Galway team that they would match Kilkenny and they certainly did that today with 14 players for the vast majority the breeze probably had an impact in regards to the quality of what they could produce in the first half Galway but I thought a number of their players stepped up then in the second half that you know it took a little bit of pressure maybe off Ailish O'Reilly of, of scoring um, the freeze even though she chipped in with nine points to, of the overall total but definitely their movement in the forwards despite the fact that we're down to 14 it just was an awful lot better wasn't it? Yeah and their work rate certainly increased and I suppose that's the, the ultimation when you get down to 14 players you have to there's no choice not to work you have to work or you're going to be overran and they certainly did all over the field but particularly their forwards I think they worked that little bit harder and didn't let Kilkenny get as comfortable on the ball maybe as Kilkenny had been for periods of the first half and ultimately then that disrupted the supply of ball going into the Kilkenny forwards and made their job that little bit tougher and made the Galway backs job that little bit Easier. We had three or four options for player of the match on, on, on both sides, but we, we've heard from Aoife Dunne, who she just, you know, she, she'll know John Locke said uh, the next time she knew it so well here today. Yeah, absolutely. Look, Aoife brings that every day. It's She's a massive player for Galway and, you know, moving out of the middle of the field, I suppose, was a bit of a, a turn for people and we're saying, look, they're breaking up the dynamic duo that's there in the middle of the field. But look, she, just because she's not in the middle of the field doesn't mean she's not tracking back and not covering the ground. You know, she was back in her own full back line. She was up in her own full forward line and, you know, nearly always get to score every day but it's her link play around the middle of the field and herself and Aisha O'Reilly linked up really really well on a couple of occasions but nothing won for either team other than maybe it just gives uh, Galway a little bit of bragging right for the, until the next time to take on the Cats of course. Yeah you know I think it's nice to top the group like you know if you come here today and, and had a performance but ultimately you didn't top the group and Kilkenny were going straight to a semi-final it'd feel a little bit like a, you know, a chasing defeat I suppose to, to not top the group but now that they've topped the group they've beaten Kilkenny they're undefeated going into a semi-final or quarter-final depending on the draw and you know that's a bit of momentum and like Aoife said everyone wants to be playing games but certainly everyone wants to be playing games and Everyone wants to be winning games and ultimately, you know, Brian Dowling, I suppose, a little bit despondent there today and, you know, still in the championship, but a, a defeat hurts and, you know, Kilkenny will have to go back to training on Tuesday night now on the back of a defeat, whereas Galway, the Galway girls will bounce into training on Tuesday night looking forward to an All-Ireland semi-final or quarter-final. Yeah, but if you win an All-Ireland title in a few in a few weeks' time, there'll be no talking about this game, of course, in Callan.
No, it'll be back to me in nothing <laughs> like it did pre-match today. But there you go. Uh, just quickly, I, I know Elaine is anxious to get off. So Group Three then has been ultimately decided. Galway topping it, but of course that doesn't even no guarantee topping the table that they're in a semi-final. That draw to take place tomorrow. Uh, Kilkenny, of course, have finished second, and uh, Clare have finished third. So Westmead, uh, with the uh, loss today, they will uh, be drawn into that relegation draw, and they could still be safe ultimately if uh, it works out for them. But uh, Clare two twelve, Westmead twelve points, um, Galway one thirteen, uh, Kilkenny fifteen points. So that decides then Group Three. Galway are top there. Uh, Cork have defeated Waterford 2.19 to 3.8 so they topped the group there on 9 points with a healthy enough scoring average uh, as well. Down though have uh, a lot of people and uh, I was one that nodded towards them as well. Fancy them maybe even to get through with the second team in that group and maybe uh, get themselves into the knockout stages. Well they have been caught up into the relegation draw now because they've lost out to Dublin by 1.9 to, uh, to 11 points. Maybe let's a quick word for Dublin in lots of ways uh, Elaine. Two big games for them. Both have maybe uh, you know been six pointers in in lots of ways. A relegation playoff and ultimately it was a prelim relegation match today. They've won both of them. You know securing their uh, status in Division One and uh, Senior Championship next year. Yeah, certainly something to build on. You know, there's obviously a bit of heart and determination that was never lacking in Dublin Camogie. Anytime I ever played them anyway, and obviously still not lacking there. You know they managed to grind out the results where they needed the most. And just looking at the scores and that it was obviously a close, tight affair. You know, and they brought it right down to the wire and managed to get the win like they did against Water in that relegation final so you know huge relief I'm sure for Dublin that they're, they're still involved in senior championship this year their championship might be over I suppose but they'll be back in the senior ranks next year So Cork topping the group Waterford second and it's Dublin then safe down then joining Westmead joining them as well will be Offaly because they lost out to Limerick by 17 points to 2-9 Limerick safe of course um, a word for Offaly you know Lots of good things we saw in the league under Susan Erner. Uh, just the game seemed to have got away from them this year a little bit. Yeah, and if, if we've been praising Dublin for being able to get results, Offaly just don't seem to be able to get results. You know, they seem to be doing a lot of things right and creating a lot of chances, but they just can't get the results. And ultimately, it's a results-based game. And look, they find themselves, you know, having had a bad league and now a bad championship on top of facing into a relegation battle. So, you know, not somewhere I'm sure Susan or our management team or the Offaly players would have liked to be. But, you know, they're experienced at that level. They're huge characters within in that dressing room Siobhan Flannery had a big impact for them again today so you know they looked to those huge characters now to try and keep out of that relegation zone and, and keep Offaly Camogie Senior because ultimately that's where they need to be to develop Offaly down Westmead and will be in that draw tomorrow one is safe and then whoever the second two out then will be in that uh, playoff so still a chance uh, there to uh, survive one game still to be played in in group one is Tipperary and Wexford that game tomorrow that could be an interesting encounter too. Yeah, I think it's going to be a, a big game. Like you said, you, we saw here tonight, you know, these uh, these games that don't apparently mean anything. Only see who tops the group and what they've brought it out. And, you know, these two teams certainly brought out the best in one another today. I think Tip and Wexford could do that tomorrow. You know, two powerhouses of Camogie over the past, you know, maybe 10 or 20 years. Wexford on the way back up and Tip certainly with aspirations of getting back to an All-Ireland final and ultimately winning one. So I think it's going to be a huge game to see who's going to top that group and, and try and give themselves the best chance to get into an All-Ireland semi-final. So Cork and Galway go into the draw. The first two out are into the semi-finals. The third team then will go in to uh, the draw, of, or sorry, into the quarter-finals with the runners up which uh, of course Kilkenny are in there Waterford is in there and of course whichever comes out of uh, uh, Tipperary and uh, Wexford so um, still could get interesting here you know lots of people expect it's still going to be though decided among the top four or do you see Waterford or Wexford or someone like that causing maybe an upset somewhere? Yeah I suppose we haven't had a huge upset in the championship to date from many teams favourites you know top in the groups Cork top in the group no surprise there Galway top in the group no surprise it was always going to be Galway or Kilkenny to top this group and most people would probably expect Tip to top that group there tomorrow but look Waterford as I said have had a huge turnaround from where their league campaign was so you know put up a good score tonight against Cork as well and they certainly won't fear anyone going into those games and you know I think they look to, to go a step further maybe you know they've been able to make quarterfinals the last couple of years I think ultimately for them now is to make the step up to a semi-final and ultimately push on from there likewise Wexford you know plenty of experience in that Wexford team they've been to All-Ireland semi-finals and finals before I don't think they'll be happy to just settle for a quarter-final position and they'll certainly look to push on again so still plenty of games to play I think and that could be in for a surprise yet. That game tomorrow then is in uh, Simple Stadium. It is, of course, Darren Kelly on uh, commentary duty with Elaine in Simple Stadium. Game throws in at 2 o'clock and it's Tipperary and Wexford and it'll be live here on the uh, Camogie Association official YouTube uh, channel. So we're going to let Elaine slip off because she's a big game uh, on in Mullinavat against uh, Dainsford. So that's thrown in at 730 
Don't think you'll make the warm up, Elaine. But anyway, there you Turn go. Turn on the heating in the car. <laughs> <if I can>. <laughs> <laughs> so my thanks to Elaine, the two uh, Shane, to Luke, and Owen for the great job that's been done in the background. I've been Killian Whelan. We'll talk to you shortly. Join the crew tomorrow in Simple Stadium. Good luck to you.